Good morning. Good morning. We will call this work session to order. Um, we have public comment this morning, Clerk. Yeah. Okay. We have two individuals. We have Mr. Larry Pierce and Mr. Uh, Professor John Kanaski. Uh, uh, Mr. Pierce, if you could come forward and state your name and yeah, address sure will. and um, your subject matter. Subject matter. Is <laughs> Coroner handicap parking at courthouse. Is that what it says? Yeah. Okay. Larry Pierce, 4120 Vincent Road, Douglasville, Georgia. I'm going to take my hat off today because I went and got a haircut Saturday and half the people at Martin's didn't know me. So I said, I wonder if I could pull that off before the commission meeting tomorrow. So uh, they said, why don't you try it? So I've got a new attitude today. But but I bet you think that with the new attitude, I'm not going to talk about somebody called the corner. Well, you're wrong. Let me tell you why you're wrong. This is an amusing story, and I find it amusing because, you know, you do things in life, and you wonder, when is it going to quit? When is it going to end? Well, as you know, I'm on a PTO for the next, uh, I don't know, seven or so months. And the reason I didn't get to speak last week, and I barely got to speak on the Tuesday meeting, about the, uh, about the uh, deal that had to do with the resolution is because I got a nice little letter here from <laughs> Judge Bo McLean, and he basically said, which I was quite surprised, and I am surprised even now, that a person or a citizen is not allowed to come to the courthouse if there's a TPO on them. So if Miss Renee comes through the door down there, she calls the Sheriff's Department and they come and tell me to leave. So the official word is, by his letter, that I filed the ex parte, if y'all don't know what that is, that means an immediate ruling last Monday when I was escorted out. And the immediate ruling back the Saturday that I got it was, you can't be up here when she's gonna be up here. Okay, so let me tell you what the amusing story is. I came up to the courthouse and I parked in handicap four weeks ago on June 24th at 9.30 in the morning. I came to do some research and fiddle around at 9.30. At 10.30, right outside the other one there, facing the Fowler Homes, there was a car next to me. And when I got out there at 10.30, guess who was parked next to me? You got it. <coughs> the corner was parked next to me. The handicap. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is by what authority does she have to park there? Now, she may have authority, but what I'm concerned about is not the fact of what I just stated, but the fact is, if there is a disability, it reflects upon the county. And I think in the job she holds, you've got to divulge, either in the beginning or the end or whenever, this took place, because she's driving a vehicle. It could be a disabled situation with a right leg, which is a gas and brake leg, or some other incident. Now, could this be on the horizon as you come across, could this be something leading to a disability that the county may have to pay for? I don't know. Y'all may not have known about it, but she was parked next to me, was seen by somebody getting in the vehicle of, of, of merit, and consequently, the issue that I have is that what authority did she have to park there? And if she did, then okay, then the county should be concerned as to what the debility is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. We Thank appreciate you. your contribution. And we will take this matter under advisement. <coughs> Last but not least, Mr. John Tomasco, please come forward. <coughs> State your subject matter. It's very difficult for me to read the subject matter, so if you could just restate your subject matter and give us your address first. Uh, good morning to all. John Tomasco, 6000 Stewart Parkway, and I'm um, speaking. Uh, on the uh, general subject of District 2. Oh, District um, according to uh, recent public information, uh, the... Uh, Can you speak up, Mr. Tomasi? According to public information, the sitting member for District 2 
you know, has a challenger in the upcoming election. And uh, I think that uh, this is a significant development. I believe the sitting member is really uniquely well qualified to be in that seat. And I also notice that this challenger has come about, perhaps coincidentally, in the wake of Fox Hall not having gotten its latest camel through the eye of the needle. <coughs> it is also uh, a uh, <coughs> fact reported by a local news outlet that uh, Atlanta is the fourth worst city in the United States for gentrification. And given what has been going on in this county <coughs> for the last few years, gentrification is a big issue. It has been displaced by lesser <coughs> issues of little consequence, but the issue is still there, spoken or not. And in the upcoming election, it may be a lot more discussed than it has been. Didn't hear much about it in the recent city council race, although District 1, in terms of our districts, is an area that's going to be very much affected. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tomaski. I appreciate your contribution, and uh, we'll move on to the next item. I just wanted to, before we go any further, I would like to uh, introduce to some and present to others our new Assistant Director of Finance, Sabrina Cockborn. If you could just please come up and just say a few words to the board. Come up here. Grab <laughs> the <laughs> And Hi. congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you all for the opportunity. I appreciate Jennifer thinking of me and the board approving. You'll have to excuse me. I'm coming off a little cold, but um, I know I got some big shoes to fill. And anything you guys need, please feel free to reach out for, reach out to me, especially I know it's budget time now. So I'm here if y'all need me. Got an open door policy, so y'all just give me a call or stop by. All right. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Board commissioners are very sensitive to this time, and I expect <coughs> uh, for our presentations, and I'm not going to go with those first, uh, but when we do get to the presentations, if you could just wait until those presentations are completed before we have questions to uh, allow us to be sensitive and kind to those who are on a time schedule. Um, I'm going to uh, look at the approval of the minutes, which is we'll skip to that, and it's uh, tab one through three. If you could just uh, take a peek at the, the minutes for tomorrow and just be prepared to approve accordingly. And then I'm going to move also from there to the approval of the expenses, which is tab number 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Board of Commissioners, if you could just make sure you look at your expenses and we will be prepared to approve accordingly tomorrow. And then I'm going to move on to, to the business item. I want to make sure I do that, and then I'll just leave my presentations for last, and I believe we can roll through these business items pretty, pretty uh, fairly quickly. And I'm going to start with tab number four, authorization to amend the hazard mitigation plan, section 9.22, and add the wording and other critical facilities when needed. Uh, Director Mulholland, if you could just give us an update. Good morning. Thank you for your time. What we're trying to do is our hazard mitigation plan has a list of projects um, that the county uh, feels is important to lessen the impact of disasters. That's the, the whole basis of the plan looking at it. And the, the wording of the plan, we've uh, identified <coughs> specific buildings as critical facilities that needed generators. As the new fleet building came on, it was not on there because it was not a county building before. A grant <coughs> opportunity has arisen. Or we need to uh, 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 alter the plan to include that build. I'd like to change the word for instead of going uh, name each building individually to, to critical facilities. I'm sure feel, uh, our fleet building would definitely be a critical facility. So just change, just change the wording in the plan. Uh, on another note, if you don't mind, go with it, we will be actually doing our, a complete update of the plan beginning next month. 
and beginning August 13th, I'm, I'm going to slide this in here, probably if it's August 13th, um, uh, we'll put some more information out. We'd like to invite the public to participate. We usually get very little participation from the public in our mitigation plan <coughs> updates when we get out. So we, I really want to kind of push it and invite the public in so they can see what we're doing and, and talk about what's important to them so they can be included in this plan. Uh, but this has to be done because my deadline for the grant is uh, um, for July 31st. So I've got to get this in there so we can uh, apply for this grant to try to get some funding for the <coughs> generator at um, Fleet Mate. Okay, questions from the board? Yes. Commissioner Carthen. Thank you for doing this. I was at the um, <coughs> old courthouse this past Friday. And because of weather, the lights went out in the old courthouse. And uh, there were doors that couldn't be opened, they had to manually be opened, it could have been locked out. Um, there are things, court sessions, um, I think classes going on for yes. people who are taking. That's one of the buildings we need to look at also for generator. Um, I, I, it, to me it's important just because I know that people take time out from their work and their jobs in order to go to these classes that are mandated by yes. the courts. If they, if they have to leave the building, come back, that's another, that's more money. That's So our citizens deserve to have, um, I think, us, if, they're in, if they're in a court, if they're in a Douglas County building, our facilities need to be able to have generators to keep the lights or keep certain things going. Yeah. So, um, yeah. my understanding, I'm not sure what how we can check and see uh, that in the past, my office used to be there years ago. Uh -huh. We had, there was a generator there, so I'm not sure why did, what, what happened, so we need to, well, I just need to revisit and, and see, do. make, and we certainly yes. will. Thank you for yes. letting me know. Yeah, I would appreciate that. But again, I, I appreciate what you're doing. It's definitely needed at the fleet building, and um, I was in class with them, and they are very appreciative that this is, is about to happen. So thank you. I yield my chair. All right, we're going to move on to tab number five: authorization to apply for a hazard mitigation grant for light lightning detectors at ten county parks at the estimated cost of each site of $9,400 and <coughs> through uh, $15,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Milholland again. Yes, we, we've been working with the uh, Parks and Rec Department uh, and about, um, we're wanting to get uh, lightning detectors at the park so when a lightning storm comes up, they, um, they'll have a notification so they can take the appropriate actions to get the people to safety. So I've been working with the staff of Parks and Rec and, and uh, Gary to, um, to try to get that information, put the pre-application packet together to send in. It's another one that's due on July the 31st. And that one, we're almost completed with the other package. I think we're about down, I think we've knocked it down to eight. And the, uh, the I'll give you a total of what we, of what we got so far on the, the cost on that one, uh, that grant. This is a 75, 25% uh, grant. So um, of the, let me get to the, uh, Sorry, go ahead and find up better. But it was 75, right at $75,000, and our proportion would be the 25% of that no, a number. Yeah, it's set, actually the amount is 74,720. Uh, 74, um, so that, uh, and we got that, there's eight, eight uh, parks that we want to do. And each unit costs nine thousand three hundred forty dollars. Oh, that was the quote we have for that. So, and that, this will go into the state. They will do a. We're competing against every other county in the um, in the state for these. So we're, and they do. They particularly like this. Uh, I've spoken to the um, the people who oversee this grant. And this is one they're they're very interested in. But they like any kind of a project. But this one they seem particularly interested in. So I really wanted, um, we've been spending a lot of time putting this information together to try to um, get the, um, the, the get um, this one right so we'll be very competitive with our, against our other counties. Okay. And this is for the, this is to get ready for a 2020 budget. Yes, this will not be this, it'll we'll take, it'll take, but okay. we probably won't get notified till middle, and sometime middle of 2020 if they were approved or not. Okay. It'll be a award. Could you restate what our match would be? Um, Let's see. You, uh, you just said 25 percent of the. Well, 70, yeah, the 74,000. 25 percent of 74, 720. Okay, thank you. I 
actually did have a question for Mr. Uh Jason, um, a lightning detector, it detects lightning how far away? It'll go, it'll get, you can go out several miles, but it, it'll come in, so the 7.4, it'll say lightning detected 7.4 miles away. <coughs> so they'll, they'll come to Parks and Rec when they get close within their parameters. They'll say, okay, we've got to shut down and get people inside and get them off the fields. So they'll um, be better, um, better equipped to make those decisions. So it's, it's detecting the, stri uh, the strikes and a certain uh, whatever rate of parameters you, you send up. It was uh, on the news that some people were hurt at Clearwater, Florida, yes. from lightning strikes just this weekend. To, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, I just wondered how far out it says de detector, but how oh, you, far does it You can detect? go. I can. You can set it all across the country. You can find out what's going on in California. Oh, <laughs> yeah. With the information, it's a net. It goes in a network. But we'll be more concerned. We'll we'll get the the data. Find out at what point we want to call um, to. Um, to call things off or get people to safety, that'd be a, a thing that the park, uh, Parks and Rec and we'll, we, with the weather service and try to come up with some proper parameters. They go out 20 miles, but you know, pretty much your parent, you know, actual detector park will go 20, 30 miles out. But there's a, rock, a lot of rock. Douglas yes, ma'am. And I think rock actually attracts. Yes, ma'am. Lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. With that, I go back. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, how many parks do we have? Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, and with, with outdoor exposure, fields, and so forth. And how many um, lightning detectors did we? You said nine or eight. What you said? I think we have. I think that's what we came up with on this. The ones that have the most, I guess, the most people. They were the parks and recs. I think is how they come up with them, that. Yeah, most of the eight are we uh, focused on the athletic complexes where there's a lot of fencing and a lot of light poles and that sort of thing that has a tendency to draw lightning. Uh, some of the picnic areas and remote small areas we didn't include in it, uh, but uh, we focused on the larger uh, athletic association parks. Okay, N name the parks, please, for the record. Uh, well, we got. Uh, we have them listed there. I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll read them all. All right. Deer Lick, Boundary Waters, Lithia, Lithia Springs Park, South Sweet oh, South Sweetwater Road, um, and that's Post Road Park. Post Road Park, Fair, Fair Play, Bill Art. Bill Art. Six. Okay. Uh, which one? Okay, here we go. Deer Lake, Boundary Waters, Lithia Springs Park, Winston Park, Bill Art Park, Chestnut Lug Park, Post Road Park, Fair Play Park. Yeah. All right. So, all right. And so those are considered the largest and most densely um, visited or highly visited populated area. Um, what about the other um, parks? Is there? <coughs> And again, I have to ask the question, right? You, you think about the wholeness of, of our entire network. Um, and again, we're thinking this is the highest probability. I get it. Um, but well, was it a function of cost that we didn't cover all the parks that have exposure to the kids? Or is it just, I mean, what was the determining cutoff factor? I'm just curious. I want to hear this for the record. Why, why did we pick, why we didn't come up with a strategy that perhaps did all the parks? Lightning is lightning. My kid in a small park is just as exposed as anybody in a big park. It's okay. I just want to know the answer. I get fencing. I get all those things. But I, I want to know <coughs> what's the cutoff criteria versus 15, 16 parks versus the eight. And is there, was there a cost? Like, well, should the Board of Commissioners consider making sure that every, I mean, okay, the grant only gives you a certain amount of money. Okay, I got that. All right. But should we stagger this over time and say, but our goal ultimately is to ensure if we're going to put it in one area, should not everybody have the same protection? It's almost like saying we're only going to have um, law enforcement on one side of the county versus the other, right? It's like we're only going to protect this side versus that side. So it's just something I, I'm curious to hear what your response is. I don't have a, I want to see what your position is um, on this. Can you weigh in, Gary? Just give me some insight. And, oh, yeah. Wait, yeah, please. Sure. Uh, basically, you know, we could we could apply for all the parks. Uh, I was looking at cost number one, uh, not number one, but looking at cost. 
I was looking at the amount of people that congregate in our parks. Uh, I'll go back to light poles and fencing. Uh, you go to the Athletic Association parks and you got people standing around fencing, leaning on fencing, and uh, I thought those, you know, sitting on bleachers, a lot of them. Uh, so that's where we focused in, not to say we wouldn't <coughs> mind having them at all the parks or should have them at all the parks. Those were just the first eight that we uh, focused on. Right, which I'll, I'll be quick. But again, so to that point, was there a strategy to think through the whole system, <coughs> right? And that, that, and again, I'm not in that um, committee, nor am I, you know, I spend too much time with the department. I'll call you every now and then to ask a question, um, you know, if it sparks my interest. But this is just something that makes me think, well, again, it's not could we do it, but should we lay out a plan? I get the immediate cost, but um, the cost of government is the cost. It, it, it does cost. It does increase. Um, I, I just, again, one more time, one area is going to be protected, but the other isn't. And it's, it's about, well, this area is bigger versus this area is smaller. And I'm looking at the rationale, I'm like, okay, no, what now? I get it. Um, it's just one of those that makes me think, like, for those areas, for those parents um, that are out there on those fields, lightning is not a respecter of when it comes down. I get what, what may, may drive um, or draw it down, but I'm listening to this, like, okay, guys, so we'll leave one area unexposed. And so I'm looking at, is there at least an openness to the administration to consider, is it y'all are administration, I'm just here to check and balance. So my job is to say, okay guys, but what about everybody else? And so it becomes, what about everybody else? Those, those, those parents, that your neighbors that are in the smaller parks, that they don't, they're not, and it just makes me think, and I don't, I'm, I'm not belabor this one, it's just something I'll take offline and sort of think through, it's not belabor this moment, I, I think it's warranted, please keep moving forward, but it just made me think, okay, what about everybody else? I get it. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Directly the hall and it sounds like this grant is pretty competitive, and I think that's why you probably drill down the A, but also, Mark, if you could just uh, uh, just quantify what the remaining parks would cost and just give, bring, be prepared to give that information to the board commissioners so we can <coughs> capture the holistic uh, approach. We'll take the holistic approach, but that's fine. But still, I know it sounds like this grant is competitive, so if you put all 15 parks in there, you may minimize our opportunity. So we want to go in, and then we'll see what it would take to pick up that additional right. cost, okay? We'll do that. And we'll move on to the next item, which is authorization to apply for a hazard, hazard mitigation grant for the purchase of a generator at the Douglas County Fleet Building. Now, I think we, we, we just talked about that. We covered one. that. So any questions from the Board of Commissioners on that? That's something that when I had an opportunity to visit Fleet about a month ago, uh, Ross shared that <coughs> we didn't have a generator. I said, well, you guys, we need this because of you know, cars and uh, trucks and what have you doing emergencies. So, Thank you so much. Any questions for our director? All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for moving in that direction with the generator. Tab number seven, authorization for the tourism department's proposal to use the fund balance amount of hotel, motel, <coughs> tax collected in 2015 through 2018, which is restricted to being spent on tourism, conventions, and trade shows, TCT, in compliance with the Georgia <coughs> Department of Community Affairs and amend the budget accordingly. Our Director Cash, how are you doing? Tom? Great, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, as you are aware, the Tourism Department is funded from the Hotel Motel Tax, um, not from the General Fund. When we collect the Hotel Motel Tax, there is a percentage that goes into the County's General Fund. There's a percentage that goes to Tourism Product Development, which is what we use um, to help the museum and the uh, Cultural Arts Council, and then there's another percentage that has to be expended basically by your, your tourism agency, which is our department, um, and that's for tourism conventions and trade shows. So um, we have a fund balance from some monies that we haven't spent over the last few years, and the Department <coughs> of Community Affairs has recommended um, that we, to get in compliance with the way the hotel motel tax reads that we expend these um, funds. And so I came up with a detailed plan on how to spend um, the money and we just need your <coughs> approval to amend the tourism department budget so that we can begin to spend these funds. Okay. Um, any questions from the board commissioners? Uh, Commissioner Carpenter, if you have a question. What's the balance? 
469700 And your plan, because we didn't get a copy of your plan. Okay, I attached it to the, um, I thought I attached it to the um, agenda. When I put the agenda item, but I have a copy of here, just in case that happened. Oh, never mind, Colleen. I do see it. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure, so I did bring hard copies just in case. Thank you. And the 469.7. So, can you kind of give me some background? Is is this in relation to you all setting up the nonprofit for the tourism board? Is this in relation to that? No, this is just money that um, we didn't spend over the last few years because we, we didn't have the uh, tourism department all fleshed out uh -huh. and DCA um, they keep an eye on it but in the last year they they've really I don't want to say cracked down because they're not being you know mean about it but they've sent us some gentle reminders that we needed to go back and in the audit process and found that this money um, had not been spent exactly where it was supposed to. It was kind of just sitting hadn't in the funding. Yeah, hadn't yeah. been spent at all. Yeah, hadn't been spent, right. So it was just kind of sitting there as we were getting our tourism department and figuring out what we had to do in the 501c6 and all that. Um, so we're just following the DCA's um, recommendations, right. That's what I wanted to know. All right. I do. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, yes, sir. Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, um, so I, I was just listening to the words, so we're, we're non-compliant in the use of funds, all right? And so basically it sounds like DCA is like, okay, so why did you, to me, why are you taxing, why do you have this in place if you don't have use for the funds? I appreciate the fact that now you've got the <coughs> um, and you put forth, so this is not you, but I'm just listening to what's being said, right? Like, all right, we're sitting on half a million dollars in cash. And that what you said, 2015 through 2018, was that accurate? Yes, sir. It, it's the aggregate, right? So I need the citizens to pay attention. Always follow the money. Right. Okay, guys. Right. So uh, again, here we are. Um, this is just to bring us forward, right? This is just spending that cash, right? I understand that. Um, uh, going forward, this brings us up to par. Going forward, um, will we be in compliance in that we will have a use of funds? That's the first question ongoing. And then my second question is, um, as it relates to hotel motel tax. And Jennifer, this is to you, and I know you provided it. Um, two, two parts, and I'll be done. I yield up, Jennifer. Um, Jennifer Hallman, Director Hallman. The second question is, our hotel motel tax is driven by hotel motels. You did a, you did a report for me. I know you did. Um, I just don't have it with me. Who were the top um, generators? Remember you did that report? Do you remember the amount? Um, I do not. We might be can able you? To when you get a chance, that. you don't have to believe it at this moment. Madam Chair wants to keep this going, but can you get all the Board of Commissioners that report mm -hmm. you provided for me before the end sure. of the day? Sure. And I think it'll be very insightful. I can, I can tell you okay. that basically I don't have the exact numbers, but it's going to be the Hilton Garden Inn, the, um, yeah, the Thornton, the Hilton Garden Inn, uh, the uh, new courtyard in Fairfield, um, and possibly the Candlewood Suites, and then the villas at Vauxhall. Okay. Get to specifics, but I thought, I, I mean, I think I knew that, but I just wanted yeah. to hear it. Because the other, we have a couple of other hotels that are smaller, yep. and they're also extended stay, yep. and when you get into extended stay <coughs> hotels, they, after a, certain, after a person stays in the hotel a certain amount of time, they no longer have to pay the additional hotel motel tax because mm -hmm. they're using it as, a, as an extended stay. So those few that we have that are extended stay, we don't get as much tax from them. All right. All right. Can you answer that final question? That yes. What was the final? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Never mind, let it go. I'm, I'm no, 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 no. I thought no. you were asking that no, to Jennifer. No, no, oh, no. I see. In the future, yeah. um, we have a better handle now on exactly uh, what DCA, how they want us to spend this. Yeah. And I'm working closer uh, with Jennifer. It was kind of an unknown. Yeah. We had a lot of hotels just pop up. And Plus, the, we went from 5% to 8%. Yeah, we went from 5% to 8%, and then we had the hotels, and then um, they brought me in, and we've been working on it basically since I came full-time in 16, 
we've been working on this. I've been working with Mark. I've been working with uh, Jennifer and with Legal to get us into compliance. It wasn't just an overnight thing. So from from <coughs> here on, we know exactly what we're supposed to be doing, and our budget will will reflect that correctly. And it's not so much non-compliance as, as as much as it was we had more revenue than we had expenditures at the time. And so we needed to develop a larger budget and right. a larger scale of what we wanted or the county wanted to do as far as tourism. It wasn't that we were spending hotel motel funds on things that we shouldn't have been. Right, right. no, we weren't spending right. it the wrong way. We wasn't spending enough of it. We weren't spending enough of it, correct. And this was statewide too, it's not. <coughs> yeah, they, they did not, not pick on us. Focusing on Douglas County. Everybody. Everyone, every city and county entity that collects hotel motel tax got these letters from the Department of Community Affairs. They're just trying to tighten everybody up because there are other places that are not correctly spending there, but that's not us. We just weren't spending as much. We we're packing it away and not spending it all um, till we kind of saw how many hotels we're going to have and kind of developed a plan of where we wanted to get. No, and, and I appreciate that, and I'll make my, my, my closing comment. The history of this goes when back in 15, we were talking about Fox Hall, that um, the city had an 8%, right, go, now, this is for history. Mm -hmm. This is how this went down. No, this was back back in 15, right. Fox Hall, the city was already charging 8%. They're trying to figure out how we're going to fund this, and so it was, it was it's one of those where, again, I just sort of sat back and watched it unfold. But it was like, okay, so, all right, we just, okay, they charge, city charge eight, let's us charge eight. I'm in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to the logic of the leadership. Right. Okay, y'all gonna charge it, y'all, what, what are you gonna do with this money? And it, and it was just one of those where, again, I'm, and I'm, I, I did this by design, right? So, like, okay, so we, this money has been taxed. And we really didn't have a proper use for it. It's not y'all, this is not about y'all, sure. but it's, it's when we get into these debates about tax increases and, and different different conversations, like, okay, you, you, it, there has to be a purpose. Why did you do what you did? And every now and then you have to go back and be accountable for, okay, you did this, and now we've got this surplus. We didn't use it wrong, and I, I wasn't implying that. It's, it sat in this mm -hmm. designated budget. But let's be honest about what the numbers are and how we got where they are. I, I just. It's more of an educational than anything, so everybody can look like, okay, do y'all know what just what they just said? And so um, I appreciate this. You guys are on the right track. I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm fine with what, what's being presented and stuff. And you, Colin, I know you had to come into this thing. We created this on the fly. I know we moved you here and there, so I, I get all that. Right. This is not about Colin, ladies and gentlemen, or anything that she stepped up, I'm sure. Uh, I just wanted to make this. It's always about the backstory to the numbers. Sure. So. And I think the 8% um, the also besides putting us in the same with the city, so literally you would be staying in a hotel across the street and paying 8% and going across uh, to this, because the way the city and the county, so we wanted to be consistent, plus we're in the Atlanta market and, you know, we wanted to, to be um, competitive, you know. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Carpet, I believe. Yes, ma'am. Colleen, I just wanted to see um, had you spoken with um, Gary in regards to our trails within the parks. Can can some of those funds be allocated for the walking trails and some of the things within the county that we can? It's a fine line, and mm -hmm. I've I've been talking with um, DCA about it. Mm -hmm. That would not come out of this portion. Mm -hmm. We have the other portion for tourism product development. Okay. So if we were allowed to do trails, mm -hmm. um, it would have to come out of that other dedicated portion. TPD instead uh, of T. TPD. Yes, okay. TPD instead of TCT. Exactly. Oh, you're learning the acronyms. Um, there's a fine line with that, um, and we really would need to sit down with legal because when they're saying trails, they're thinking trails like the film trail, and there's mm -hmm. you know courthouse trails, and they're not so much as like the trail at Boundary Waters. Right. That is considered more of like a tourism trail versus just a walking trail mm -hmm. at at Deer Lake. And so that's what I was thinking about, the Boundary Waters Trail. Yes, so that, that is right. a possibility for that other portion of money, but not this portion. Got you. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we start having those conversations. Absolutely. About that. Yeah, and Mark and I have mentioned that, okay. um, talking about that going forward. Okay, good. Thank you. I yield thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Guider has one Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, 
calling. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I notice a lot of this is just advertising. Right. The majority of it is just advertising. Absolutely. But with a very small amount uh, set aside for the website. Seems to me like the website would be one of the first place that people would go to see mm -hmm. what's in the area. <coughs> Absolutely. So um, I have a looked at what uh, you already have on the website. Right. What are some of the uh, improvements that you're going to make? Um, we have a very basic website right now and uh, this is just additional money to bump up the website. So I using a local firm, we're using Fame um, Internet Marketing, so they gave us a, a really um, discounted price to work on the website. So this is just to continue making it it bigger and better and more user friendly. And right now it's very basic, um, and we'll just continue to make it more interactive, make it more attractive. Um, what I've actually done is I've sent the website out to, um, I belong to a group of, it's called Tourism Geeks, and it's basically for everyone or over the, the whole country that works in the uh, website and social media area, and I've gotten a lot of feedback uh, recommendations from I mean, places like Colorado and other places that looked at it and said hey here's some recommendations we think that you know we would think you would want to do this and do that so we we've got a plan we've got a lot of um, ideas so the 10,000 is just a start and that's just for the remainder of this year the going forward. Yeah. yes sir absolutely this yeah. is just this, have that much money. Yeah. this money is just to be spent by the end of this calendar year if we at all possible or at least allocated and then I'll have another a budget for next year that will have a better handle on how much that budget will be and I'll have more for website and more for everything. And uh, have you thought about any TV spots? Uh, a lot of people are advertising. We, cer we certainly have I'm our um, our uh, Atlanta, new tourism coordinator, <coughs> Ebony, and I don't know if everyone got to meet yeah, Ebony Hammonds our so tourism coordinator. Her, could you bring Ebony? Ebony, come on up. And she has a um, she has a film producing um, background, mm -hmm. and she uh, has come up with a marketing plan that includes radio um, and TV spots that will be incorporated. I would think if you'd reach more people, absolutely just putting up a billboard. Or no, I, and I totally agree. Um, and these were just some things that um, I was able to put together. And hopefully we would do TV spots for the most part that we wouldn't have to pay for, that we would be guests okay. on like Good Day Atlanta and things, oh, things yeah. like that that we could do. And in the future we would look at doing um, commercials. We're actually working on some videos okay, right. right now. And we're working with Rick's department and, mm -hmm. and he's working on some stuff with the chamber and the development authority. So she's kind of taken <laughs> on that <coughs> part of it. Okay. In addition, our social media is doing very well. Okay. So that's another place we're doing a lot of outreach. Um, I target um, I-20, back and forth. Anyone who lives off of I-20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we find Birmingham <laughs> and the Alabama area really um, attractive, obviously, because they're coming through to Atlanta anyway. We're trying to pull them off to stay here, um, and then that will increase our hotel motel tax, and then we'll, you know, it's a perpetuating um, funding source. Okay. <laughs> I thank you. Thank you so much. Ebony, would you introduce yourself to yeah, the Sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ebony Hammonds. Um, I guess I've been with the department for almost six months now. Um, I love it. <laughs> um, I have a background in television production and, and um, <coughs> producing news and um, corporate videos and uh, satellite media tours and social media management. <coughs> Thank you. You're yes. welcome. So glad we could introduce you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Colin. Okay. We finished. Thank you very much. All right. Board of Commissioners, um, you may not know, but our carpet at the Senior Center of Woody Fife has not been changed in 14 years, and that's where I host my birthday parties mm -hmm. once a month. So I have an opportunity to look down and see what I don't like to see, which is uh, dirt and filth and certainly uh, talk to our director, Sherry Johnson. Ms. Johnson, if you could come forth about replacing the carpet. So we're going to move on to the next tab. The tab is number eight, authorization to award a carpet replacement of the Woody Fife Center to Georgia Floors and Moors Decon LLC for a total cost of $19,988.14 and amend the budget. 
Where are you, Ms. Johnson? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, first off, I would sincerely like to thank the commissioners. We have had our painting done, and it looks fantastic. We wanted the painting done before we did the carpet. And one of the qualifications for the carpet bid were that it be tiles, so that when we have a problem, we can take up a carpet tile and replace it with another. Um, I know this lady up here has been over there at least once a month at our birthday parties, and she has seen what we've been through. The building had not been painted nor new carpet in 13 years since the original thing. So it was sorely needed. We're updated now, and so we, that's what we're asking for is if we get this carpet. Okay. Any questions from the board? Vice Chairman Robinson, I believe you have a question. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I appreciate, um, when you, you look, look at the history of the county and, and just where its current status, and I, I do want to at least commend sometimes, I, while I'm always constructive, because that's my job, is to, to, to do those things as a local legislator. Um, I, I give credit where credit is due. Um, the fact <coughs> that it, it, it's taken 13 years to, to change the seniors' <coughs> carpet. Like what has been happening for 13 years is the equivalent yeah. of what has happened to our roads, right? And all of a sudden, so I, I appreciate the fact that, Madam Chair, that you, 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 you take it upon this. It's, it's well overdue. It makes sense. Um, I, I support this 100% because, again, one more time, it's like, okay, you haven't painted the place? You haven't maintained the carpet? It's like cutting your grass or, or paving the roads and stuff. So, like, what, what has been happened with the last decade and a half. So I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that and um, um, how long will it take this to get it done? I guess that's my question for them to be able to realize they're, you know, a Hopefully better. Hopefully we can get this done in a week. That fast. In a week's time. Right. The whole building. And both of these items, both the painting and the carpet, have been in the budget <clears throat> at the hours for a number of years. And we, it they was just actually in the one last year. And that's why, why I think what prompted this. Right. It just was never a priority. I, I, I stand 100%. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, um, Director Johnson. And then we have also uh, Dr. Gilchrist with us, who is also the Director of Senior Services on Fairburn. And she actually, we got some, some things going in the works for her, so I'm quite sure you'll be coming for before us real soon, wanted to spruce that area up too. I had an opportunity to spend Christmas with the seniors there and said, couldn't keep my eyes off the blinds and the floors, and I said, maybe I need to go into interior design or something, because I'm always decorating. Those items are already in the system. So they're <coughs> in the system. Okay, so we have a video for the um, painting. Okay. Um, so we have a video for the painting. Oh, you do? The PO and the painting for Yes, the sir. Okay. Thank you. Sounds don't get good. Getting quotes. They're working on property management. I'm getting quotes on the blinds, and they're, we're going to install those, so. All right. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Thank you so much. Next, we'll move to tab number nine. Authorization to approve a memorandum agreement with the Atlanta Regional Commission, ARC, for the recently awarded Community Development Assistance Program, CD, I call it CDAP, to update our unified development code and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Roberts. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. So this, before you, is uh, the next step in a process that began back in January mm -hmm. when I came before the Board of Commissioners to talk about the application for the CDAP, right, Community Development Assistance Program. And it was at that time identified in, that I had uh, some money in my budget that we, we could reallocate for a match, 80-20 match to pursue this. Um, the grant was submitted. In May, we found out that there were, there were actually 49 applications throughout the region, 18 communities were selected, Douglas was one of them. And now we will be moving forward with an agreement to start the process, which will take probably about 12 to 15 months. We've only had one meeting with ARC staff at this point to discuss really what our scope is going to be and what we're going to be doing uh, to update and look at a zoning audit and an update of our uh, unified Development Code, and that's what this agreement is today. Okay. Any questions for what? <coughs> Self, pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So
have number 10, authorization to enter into a service agreement with Verizon Wireless to provide wireless connectivity to the fire department apparatus as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Chief Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is our final uh, piece of the puzzle we need to get internet access on all of our fire trucks so that when 911 dispatches a truck out, they can send all that information straight to the fire truck. We'll know where our hydrants are at. We'll know any pre-plans that may have been done on that building. We'll know the entry points, the exit points, all, where all the critical hookups for gas, electrical, uh, water are in that building. Uh, so this is uh, part of a project we've been working on for several years now. And uh, the uh, funds for this were approved in the budget. So we're just, uh, since there's a contract, we need to bring it before the board to get it signed. Okay, any questions from the board? So Pretty self-explanatory. We'll move on to the next item, tab number 11, <coughs> authorization to solicit request for a proposal to design the fire station number nine, Douglas Hill Road, as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee. Um, Chief Spencer again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we actually had a set of plans, uh, a proposed set of plans for fire station number nine mm -hmm. uh, that was drawn uh, several, several years ago. <coughs> We met with that architect to review those plans. Uh, since that time, there have been uh, many, many changes in what we need and what the best practices are in the fire service. Um, so we took those <coughs> back to that architect, discussed it with him, uh, and he said we really needed just to redesign the whole building. So, and it wasn't a complete set? No, it was not a complete set. This was just basically a, a, a basic floor plan. Okay. So, uh, what we're asking for now mm -hmm. is uh, to get the Station 9 project uh, started. Uh, we need to do a uh, request to des uh, request for proposal to design, to design that station for us. Okay. Vice Chairman Robson, I believe you have a question for Chief. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, sir. Um, all right, so you know, this is something that's been sitting out there for quite some time. And, and you know, when I came on board, I think it was always on uh, the prior county administrator's list uh, <coughs> that we knew that the, the Thornton Road area um, at that time uh, wanted uh, support for, uh, from fire. We used a lot of what mutual aid for the most part and coming down, you know, um, Riverside, etc. cetera. Um, obviously, since then, that whole commercial area has really blossomed, uh, really blew up. A lot of um, commercial and industrial, so it is, is very warranted. Um, so the question becomes, what this, we asked this question this morning in our briefing with, with our SWAS uh, members, but what grew in scope? What, what, why do we have to do the resign? That's the first question. What what grew? Why did why wasn't it sufficient? What do we? It didn't necessarily grow. Okay. Uh, like I said, there's been a lot of best practices that we've adopted. Yep. Uh, number one, cancer prevention. Uh, the old station didn't have a separate area for our turnout gear. Okay. Uh, uh, the original station was not designed with exhaust system uh, to remove the diesel fumes as they come in. Okay. Uh, and it's just a larger, a little larger station because of the equipment we're going to be putting in. Okay. So these, these will be what three bay, four bay, big giant ladder trucks to get to top of those. I mean, yep. Uh, currently, it's scheduled to have three bays. Yep. We'll have a ladder truck, an engine, and a ambulance. Uh, depending on how our budget requests go, uh, we'll probably put a, a uh, battalion chief in that station as well. <coughs> so put the count into two battalions. How, how, how many people does that support? I mean, what, what, what does it take to put personnel-wise, uh, shift-wise? I mean, I don't, I'm trying to get the order of magnitude in my mind. What are you saying? Uh, you're talking 9 to 10 at that station per shift, so 30 people. Okay, 9, 10, 9. This morning I heard 15, so th that's why I ask these questions, because I, when I get inconsistency, I'm like, okay, you don't do me that way. All right, so somewhere between 10 to 15. Uh, we're told two different numbers. So I, I, I want to make sure that, um, I'm, so you have, you have fixed costs, which is building the building, mm -hmm. and you have operating costs. And so behind this comes um, an increase uh, in operating expenditures. And so my question becomes, 
when do you think this is going to come online? Because my long-term capital planning director, Hall, we just got to lay this out when I think this is going to hit. Um, in, in my mind, I mean, there's proper planning for that. So can you give me some insight that once this design is done, when you think construction, just order of magnitude. I'm just trying to get a feel. It was scheduled for year six of the sponsor. So the construction was. Construction was, yes. So that's when it would come online. Because right, I heard this morning, what, 2021? That's what we, we thought we heard. So, so I'm getting this range then. I'm, I'm listening to the consultants, I'm listening to uh, obviously our staff, and so somewhere in there is the truth. All right, so, um, okay. All right, I, mean, I, I get it. So, I mean, again, it was an old design. I understand the need to refresh it. That's fine. I just want to make sure that when we mark these comments publicly, that there's no, we don't get forgetful about what was said. So, um, I got it. And, and Commissioner, if I may. Yes. Uh, on the difference in numbers between 10 and 15. Yep. Uh, that allows for future growth as well. That's so true. that's the reason you, if, right. if we had to operate it today yep. based on the staffing levels, uh, it'd be closer to 10, but staffing levels we need would be closer to 15. So. Yeah, so 15 times three is 45, 45 times the average person, 45,000 gives me what, two, two million dollar budget, right? I'm, I'm just, quick math, right? It's so like, okay, that's $2 million fully loaded. Okay, Jennifer, let's make sure we make sure. I, I get you what you have to do uh, to sort of uh, introduce this into the atmosphere, but at the same point, it's my job to make sure, like, okay, let's make sure we get this on the list and so we can properly plan how we scale this in light of two other buildings that are coming online before it, right? That, like, okay, you can't go and spend fixed costs and then sit here with empty buildings. So that means you've got to plan for this. And that, that's the part where, okay, guys, this is coming online. So, Jennifer, we, we'll talk about this later. How do we spread this out? How do we set expectations for the public? How do we make sure that we're able to accommodate something? Because while staff is doing what they're doing, they just go and just like, but okay, at some point they're going to be looking for us to, to how do we, we deal with that? Um, and obviously we know, um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. I yield now. Okay. Yes, um, and Scott, we did talk about this at the, the meeting that we're going to give the designer or the architect um, a budget to come in by because it's very important that we stay within our budget. And if, if the design uh, brings in higher bids than our budget, we may have to put it back out there, so it may take a year to get the design, uh, but it's very important to us that we stay within our budget. So. Yes, ma'am, we are very cost-conscious. Cost <coughs> yes, and um, there was a, one other thing. Oh, I was just, just going to um, uh, say one thing, that originally it was going to be one building, mm -hmm. and so the staff has doubled because it's uh, turned it, uh, I'm talking about uh, some of our buildings, our senior center and our youth center mm -hmm. was going to be one building originally under the splash and it was split up. Mm -hmm. So the personnel and all that is sort of doubled because of that. Okay. okay. With that, I go back. And if uh, I <coughs> have questions, if the uh, commissioner, our guidance, is the chairman of the fire and EMS committee, so that's why she has a plethora of information here to provide today. So thank you, uh, Commissioner Guy. <coughs> and then um, Commissioner Carpenter serves as the Vice Chairman. <coughs> Any questions for Chief? No, ma'am, we certainly appreciate our two committee members. All right, yes. All right, we will move on to the next item. We almost, I think we'll make the level point, then we can move to our presentations. Um, next, we have authorization to approve the in-building radio distribution agreement between the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, the Douglas <coughs> County Board of Commissioners, and the Verizon Wireless LLC, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. But, okay, not Major Holmes, sir. Major, <laughs> Wayne Wisenhut, <coughs> 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 okay. Director Rod Ross, <laughs> okay. wanted to come up and present this one today. Okay, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members Good morning. of the board. This is basically a renewal. We currently have a system in place from Verizon that went into our building in 2012 when we moved in. Uh, this is to upgrade that system and to provide Verizon access to our easement so that they can run a new fiber line. Um, basically, without that system in place, we don't have communication on our cellular devices within the building. So this is to keep us going. And it's not cost to the county. This is something that they do periodically with their systems and it's just that time again. 
Okay. Any questions from the board? Pretty self-explanatory. Thank yes, you for keeping us moving in the right direction in terms of Absolutely. advancements and enhancements. All right, we'll move to tab number 13, authorization to approve change order number five in the amount of $1,153.31 for the Boundary Waters Concession Stand Splash Project to be funded through the 2016 Splash Funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Dukes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is a change order that was to meet uh, per the fire marshal. Uh, safety change order, and uh, it was, as you said, recommended by the Parks and Recreation Committee. Okay, any questions for the board? Commissioner Geiger? Yes. Uh, Gary, was it left out of the plans? I don't know. We, I'd have to ask Mr. Gay uh, about that. Because uh, architectures are supposed to <coughs> check with local code so that we meet local code. Right. So, and the project's already 150000 Yeah. So uh, I just wondered if it was in the plans. Do we ever have any recourse to go back on the architecture that if they make a mistake? I don't know the answer out? to that. I'd have to <coughs> defer to legal about going back on the architect. I'm sorry, I was typing. <laughs> I had no idea. Commissioner Guyton was asking if the, uh, the uh, exit sign, I believe, is what was a change order on the uh, building down at Boundary Waters if we have any recourse to go back on the architect because it was left off the plans. Because it may require a change order of $1,153.31. It would cost us more to go after the architect than it's going to cost to fix the problem if it's only $1,000. Well, I, what too. I was saying, it was $150. Overall, I don't know what the other change orders are where they become but is there any recourse to go back against an architecture if they leave out, they're supposed to check the local code, fire code, any other ordinance and things like that before they draw out the plans. Is there recourse that we can ever go back against an architect? Well, Mark's an engineer, so I'll let him answer that. But yes, <laughs> I don't think we can, um, simply because if it's left out, it wasn't included in the bid. If it was in there, it would have been in their bid anyway. So either way, that money would be in there. The plans are approved. They're reviewed and approved by multiple people, including the fire marshal. That doesn't mean that every little exit sign and that everything's caught. So there's sometimes that it's caught at final inspection, which is the case this time. And now I can add to that after okay. hearing it by Jesse. I'm sorry, I didn't have my second cup of coffee this morning. If we come and try it with an architect to design something, they got to meet design standards. But what you're going to find in that process where all their little caveats is, our staff also missed it too if it was a requirement. Because it's been run, the, the project has been run through us if we have a requirement <coughs> as well. And my guess is there's back and forth between the architect and staff. And I don't know that in this case. It may have not happened. <coughs> but if it's just a thousand dollar change order, that pursuit is, is not worth it. Either. I was talking in general to well, other, yeah. other cases. Well, I mean, we've had other cases. We had an HVAC system that was missing from the hallway to jail that we went back and got remedies on. So, yes, you, the answer generally is yes. Mm -hmm. Whether it's applicable to this circumstance or not, is a, I'd have to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. So, it's up to our staff to recheck well, all the codes and everything? Before I, before I blame staff, which was not my intent, my, my point is they're working with staff, so I don't know what emails were exchanged, what dialogue, what sign-offs occurred. I mean, there's more to it than just, this didn't go in, let's sue somebody. The question is, what are the facts that led up to it not going in? I have no idea what they are as I sit at this meeting. Well, I wasn't talking about really suing, maybe uh, having a contingency fund uh, require that or have it built into the budget for things like this. Well, typically there is a contingency. They put the money in. <laughs> this may be a policy discussion, not okay. for this meeting appropriate, but there is typically a contingency fund and we have somehow blessed what we've accepted. We accepted the project. Yes. We blessed it at some point. And that's an issue we need to take a look at as well. Okay. <coughs> I yield back. Okay. All right. We'll move on to the next item. Tab number. Oh, I didn't see. No, it's okay. No, no, no. And again, we're talking about concession. 
Yes. Yeah, contest them. Um, again, great job, uh, great. Um, uh, we had sort of the press conference, everything. Um, I think it's well received, uh, etc. Um, but in, in walking through, I mean, again, I thought it was a spectacular multi-purpose um, facility within itself. Um, there's some small things that were identified, uh, I'm sure you guys, and, uh, along the way. How will y'all reconcile that since we're in here and we're talking about chain doors and stuff? But what is the approach to deal with the rest of those things that are uh, changing, you know, maybe changing things, I mean, you know, within the restrooms? How are y'all going to deal with that overall? I'm going to get with... Uh more more than Alex Belly. Yep. And uh, he's going to get with the uh, contractor. Yep. And we are going to purchase uh, baby changing tables for both restaurants. It, it, not just isolating that as, as my point, which is sort of a stepping off, but how will you, you, you always have a design. It's like a house, anything else. And it's like, oh man, I, I didn't have this. Oh, I, you know, how, how will you reconcile what you, you envision? versus what you got and, and, and um, how, uh, how will you close the loop? And we're talking about things, not what you, you'd like to have, but the things that were the base requirements. How will you reconcile that? Well, we, we usually catch most of that stuff. We have right. uh, meetings with Moreland Altabelli along with the uh, architect, yep. uh, multiple meetings, and um, sometimes it, 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 it happens, and I'm it okay. Happens. I'm not. I'm not. It happens. The question right. is, how do you reconcile? What What is the process for reconciling uh, reality versus what you you plan? That, that's all I'm asking. And, and how will y'all approach that? Was it like in committee? And as y'all go through and you get a punch, it's like the old punch list. Go through the punches. All right, I got a sheet of paper. Here's the punch list. What is the process for reconciling the punch list? Whatever it is, what you wanted or what you like, what you needed versus whatever. How will you deal with? It? That's all I'm asking because I'm trying to get a feel for how y'all gonna approach these bigger projects. Um, and you know, um, can you go there? Give me some insight. Yeah, usually, again, there's all the meetings, and yep. usually at the end, there's a walkthrough process. Yeah, we go through and walk through and look at all the building and look at everything that's uh, part of the building. Yep. But in this case, evidently, the the change tables were left off. Or exit or anything like all this is like there's some things that were missed. It's not criticism. It's just like okay. But you'll come back to the meeting, and when there's a cost difference, you'll bring it back before the Board of Commissioners, or are you going to handle it through committee? Um, um, just say it publicly, so how we reconcile it, that's all. Yes, we would, we'll bring it back before the Parks and Recreation Rec uh, Oversight Committee, yep. and recommend that whatever is not there be uh, an addition, and then we'll bring it to the Board of Commissioners for approval. That's okay. all I wanted to hear publicly. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We're going to move on to the next item. The next item is uh, tab number 14, authorization to approve the purchase of a vehicle for the youth sports coordinator at the cost of $20,693 uh, uh, to be funded through the 2016 Sports Equipment Funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Director Dukes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you pretty much said it. Uh, the uh, Sports coordinator needs a vehicle, and we're purchasing out of our splash funds, and it is a recommendation by the uh, <coughs> Recreation Oversight Committee. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. We'll move on to the last item, which is tab number 15, authorization to approve an agreement between the Court of Superior Court and Rapid Financial Solutions to pay drawers with the debit card instead of the check. And uh, um, Superior Court clerk Tammy Howard was here two weeks ago. She said she was going to do some research, so it's solely up to her to make a decision in which way you want to go. So please tell us what you found. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I Googled because I didn't know another way to ask. And I also asked all the 159 other counties in Georgia. The only thing that I could find was Gwinnett County pays their jurors with a, a debit card from J.P. Morgan Chase, and they cost $2 a piece, where the company that I use I want to use is 49 cents a piece for the mm -hmm. cards <coughs> and then the other company that showed up was my co the company that I want to use rapid financial um, and also I, I failed to tell you last time rapid financial is already integrated with icon which is our jury program so there'd be no setup cost for any additional software or anything would just be turning it on and we did have another check that passed this week with my signature which it doesn't look like anything like it 
or three thousand eight hundred fifty four dollars. So the checks are getting more and more. Right. So, it's, so it, it just worries me. <laughs> I just want to protect yes. protect the money. So that's really all I can find out. Appreciate your diligence. And, You're welcome. Um, Making sure that you get everything, and it seems like you can move forward as soon as possible to prevent you from forging your name. No. Any questions from the board? Thank you. Any? Okay. Thank, thank you so you. much, and thank you for bringing the stainless system to this county. All right. Now we can move on to our presentation. We have seven minutes later than what I anticipated, but we get we have a nice presentation this morning. And it's about our I-20 landscaping um, project. As you all know, Board of Commissioners have been harping on beautification <coughs> as part of this administration to allow, number one, uh, our visitors and also our citizens to know that we exist uh, in the county. Particularly, it, it helps from uh, with economic development. It helps with uh, tourism. And it just helps with uh, our economy overall when your gateways have a nice presence. So without further ado, if you can introduce yourself to us, sir, to the Board of Commissioners, and uh, you may proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and thank you for, uh, to the board members for having us this morning. Uh, that was quite the introduction, so thank you. My name is Taylor Pounds. I'm a uh, registered landscape architect with HRC here in Douglasville. So we're excited to be uh, a part of this project, and especially a part of something that's in our own backyard. So thank you again for allowing us to have that opportunity. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the I-20 uh, Gateway Project. This is, um, in my opinion, um, our first impression to many people who come through Douglas County. Um, like Ebony said earlier, we really want to grab the attention from those people traveling eastbound, but also westbound. Those people coming out of it, um, Atlanta, we want to create something that the community takes pride in, um, as well as the visitors and travelers uh, can enjoy as well. So. Um, just to quickly go over some general design considerations that um, we were thinking about as we, as we, before I show you this. Um, what we didn't realize until we really got into it was the scale of these four intersections. Um, and I'll go over here. So the four intersections being Thornton, Lee, uh, Post Road, and Liberty. And when we look at these in, from a scale standpoint, we're looking at between 25 and 35 acres each. Um, so they're, they're really big. Um, there are vast, vast amounts of grass currently. So how we fill them up, how we meet budget uh, are things that we're definitely taking into consideration. Uh, not to mention the people who are going to enjoy this are going 70 plus miles an hour. As maybe some of you in this room maybe go 69, 68, try to abide by the law, but <laughs> around 70. Um, so we have to think about, you know, massing a plant tree so you can't just, <coughs> just simply put one or two or even three trees out there. You'll just never see them when you're traveling that speed. So. Um, that's something we take into consideration. Um, variety, you know, we, we have too little variety of, or one type of plant material that you're gonna have monotony. Uh, too much, you might have confusion, you might miss it. There's, you only have so much time to, to see this. So, uh, color, four seasons. We want, we want this to be uh, beautiful for four, uh, all year round. Um, and then the environment. Um, we know out here we're, we're exposed to the elements 24, hours a day, seven days a week, no matter what time of year. So we need plant material that can survive, something that uh, is sustainable, something that's um, environmentally friendly. Uh, so on top of that, we also balance form, repetition, all this stuff that creates this overall composition that um, it, it makes this project make sense, and it makes our landscape look good, it makes it appealing to the people who are gonna enjoy it. Good stuff. All right, so I'd like to start on the, um, the western side. We have uh, Liberty Road. This is our uh, gateway to those, our friends in Alabama or anybody who's uh, on the western side of the state. Um, right now, as you can see, we have some existing crate myrtles, a little bit of vegetation over here on the um, southeastern quadrant, but really it's, a, it's pretty much an open canvas. Um, so again, how do, we, how do we want to say welcome to Douglas County mm -hmm. on the east side? So what we're proposing is um, a, a very rural-like setting um, to make sure grasses, perennials, some evergreen and hardwood, uh, or excuse me, evergreen and deciduous trees. We are propo uh, proposing a gateway sign here built into this existing slope that exists out there. We kind of want this sign to kind of grow out of a meadow-like setting. 
Um, on this side of the county, we are more rural, uh, so we want to embrace it. We're not going to try to run and hide from it. We're going to embrace it um, and decorate it. We're going to have lots of color. Um, we're going to have year-round um, interest with uh, fall color, with some evergreens that will be there in the, uh, in the winter months, uh, and then lots of grasses. Um, Someone said when I was walking up here, they said, oh, well, you guys can be doing this like uh, Six Flags. And the answer to that is uh, yes, but better. Um, so but that's, that's what I want you guys to visualize. I know <coughs> use, um, it's, it's hard to visualize, but that's, that's what we're going for. We want to modernize, but at the same time embrace our, uh, our identity. So um, I want to back up real quick. So, Right now, we are focusing on the, um, the entrance side. We are focusing on those people who are entering um, Douglas County. Not so much as to the people who are leaving. However, we can do wildflower, um, wildflowers. I don't know if many of you travel around the state have noticed that GDOT does um, offer a wildflower program. So we are working and having those conversations with GDOT on how we can um, uh, get into that program and, and maybe help uh, use county and maybe some GDOT funds to do that. Um, and what that wildflower program is, is kind of this picture over here. Uh, the state page would come out and they seed once a year um, some annual flowers in the fall. It's really when you notice, I think right now it exists right there at uh, Thornton Road. Um, so that is one thing that we are studying. Um, and it is somewhat cost uh, conscious doing that. So we can cover large spanses of land for um, a pretty moderate price. Uh, so again, here's just a picture of those wildflowers at Thornton Road. I don't know if you all have noticed those, but they are pretty um, breathtaking during the fall season. So that is, again, options we are exploring. Uh, post Road. I'm going to run through Post Road pretty quickly uh, just because things are changing uh, by the day. Um, this was a, an image that we had. Um, however, if you've driven by there over this past week and you've noticed, noticed that probably 75 to 90 percent of these trees are now gone. So they're just going to require some additional studies for us um, to figure out exactly what we're going to do, what those existing conditions are. Um, we've been in conversation uh, with GDOT and some officials there. Uh, the previous meetings, they mentioned they were going to do some tree work, but uh, they never mentioned that they were going to um, be this drastic. So, it's just going to be um, having additional conversations with them, figuring out exactly what their goal is, what their final plan is out here before we really um, dive into the design. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. We were initially using a lot of this existing hardwood vegetation. Um, we were proposing that it stayed and kind of meshing in with it. However, um, that will likely change. Um, so I'm going to go to the other side of the county now, Thornton Road. Um, this is people coming outbound uh, from Atlanta into Douglas County. Again, this is our opportunity to make um, that first impression. <clears throat> so we want to take advantage of doing so. I, I think we were very fortunate with Thornton Road and what we have existing out here. Uh, for, for you all who have, who have taken this route or familiar with it, we have two beautiful, beautiful uh, willow oaks and a third willow oak here um, that's got some existing red maples behind it. Um, fortunately for us, they're in pretty good condition. Uh, especially two of the three. So uh, it's, it's our intention is to use those uh, for, um, for our design and to really take advantage of them already being there. <coughs> so I just threw these in here just so you guys can kind of visualize. These are these trees. They're kind of globby in this image. However, they're, they're, they're large. I'd say they're at least 50, 60 years old. They're, they're big, 46 inches. I think the other ones are uh, the high 30s as far as the caliper. So or excuse me, the DBH. Um, and then on the other side we have um, some existing trees. These trees actually have been taken taken down by GDOT recently too, much like Post Road. So uh, we will continue to look at that and then maybe the opportunity we can, we can do wildfire, wildflower. Um, that, so. so at Thornton Road, um, we're on the other side of the county. We're getting, like I said earlier, we're, we're kind of more in a rural setting. As we move to the other side of the county, we're, we're more industrial. We have these data centers. We have a lot more commerce. We kind of want to reflect that with our, our theme um, here at Thornton Road. So we're a little more contemporary uh, with our bed lines, with our plant material. Uh, again, we have lots of, of color, lots of uh, flowers, lots of grasses. Uh, all of this is sustainable. Um, and you know, it's something that we will get uh, repetitive use with every year without having to go in and replant um, every year. So 
So we're starting out with uh, low, low growing perennials to work up to some grasses. Like I said, we're going to really take advantage of these nice trees that we have here. And we're going to kind of use these bed lines to push us to another gateway sign, whether it's that says welcome to Douglas County or welcome to outside the lines, however uh, we want to work with that. And I know we've had a conversation with Mark and uh, getting on a sign company there that we can work with and we'll have those conversations. So yeah. <clears throat> we are working on those, um, working on getting the design firm in here to, for those gateway signs and we're in the process with that it'll run parallel or ahead of this program. Okay. Um, so I'm going to slow down here. I think I've kind of skipped over a little bit, but one thing I do want to mention with all this plant material that we are, um, we are trying to use native plant material when able. Uh, we do want to be cognizant of what it does grow in Georgia, what can, can survive these conditions. Like I said, we're exposed 24-7 uh, all year. Uh, we're not going to have any irrigation. So the key is to get these plants in the ground, plants that once they do root in, they can thrive in this hot, arid, uh, dry uh, environment. <coughs> that is one thing that we have to take into consideration with all of these plants we're using. So the majority of this is native stuff you can find out in Georgia uh, if you were walking through the woods um, or, um, or really pastures, prairie, uh, meadows, anywhere. So uh, I definitely wanted to uh, make note of that. So Lee Road, uh, many of you are familiar with that this was rebuilt um, within the last few years. This new overpass, new um, on and off ramps. Um, so it is really a blank slate. Um, so we really get to uh, do as we please. Uh, now we do want to work with the existing slopes. We don't want to have to go out there and, and spend our dollars, uh, not on plant material, but grading. We want to avoid that. So we really want our dollars uh, to be spent there. Uh, so we're, we've, I'm really excited about the design here. We're, what we have here at, um, at Lee Road is Sweetwater Park. Uh, Sweetwater State Park is the uh, busiest park in the state of Georgia. So we wanted to reflect that in our design. Uh, so what we've done is we've mimicked our interpretation of a creek into vegetation here uh, with low growing junipers and surrounded with flowering plants, with grasses, with um, lowland uh, bog-like uh, trees. Uh, and we really wanted, when you drove past it, we wanted you to think of uh, Sweetwater State Park, and uh, that's what that's the story we're telling here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing it on all four quadrants. What you probably noticed, we hadn't done that on any of them, but that's how large of an impact we feel that Sweetwater State Park has, not only on Georgia but also Douglas County, and it's one of our big tourism um, areas. So we felt like this was important. This was it was really money well spent by maybe going above and beyond here. Uh, so I mentioned the juniper um, creek that went through there. This was just a picture of the juniper just for uh, visuals. Uh, and then we <coughs> threw in some signs of things that we found um, around the state of Georgia and also around the country, uh, things that we just really wanted to, to start that conversation on things that we could do to help visualize. And that's all I have, so I will open up the floor for questions. Okay. Uh, Board of Commissioners, as you're aware, also the, this, uh, the mayor is definitely working with her team to um, address the Fairburn Road uh, gateway as well. <coughs> uh, underway is my understanding, so we are trying to work with them just somewhat just to make sure that we are uniformed, mm -hmm. but not completely. Also, uh, Mark, if you could just share with the Board of Commissioners where these dollars are coming from, because it's not coming from the general fund, just let them know where these dollars will be coming from so we can impact. So we have a tree fund that developers pay into uh, in cases where they can't meet our um, code requirements um, for tree safety barriers or tree plantings and so right now I think we have a little bit less than 900,000 in that account. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're planning to use. Mm -hmm. And possible hotel hotel, some portion of the other. <coughs> for the gateway signs. Yeah, for the yes, gateway. For the, I'm yeah. sorry, yes, for the gateway signs. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Gaynor, so you can. Yes, I was going to suggest that uh, could we not use part of the hotel we are. tax because it, I heard tourism several times <laughs> in here. And also, have you contacted the city of Villarica about the Liberty Road? Because that is part of their, that's, their <laughs> city limits goes across the interstate. No, we have not contacted the city. Of I would suggest you do so because uh, they, they're very cooperative with uh, us. They're, they're going to help place for some lights right there at the loop and everything. And all we had to do was call them. 
It's, if it was that easy, then it will uh, it'll be at the top of my list today. I have discussed it with the city manager, so he knows we're developing this. We, as soon as we get further along in the project and have some cost estimates, we will have those conversations with Sue Bill with it. Okay. But yes, they are aware of it. Okay, and I was going to just stress that we need to do uh, drought tolerant plants uh, that are uh, you know from this area and everything, so that we don't lose the plants, have to replace them, lose the plants. And when you're laying these out, now will we have to <coughs> take over the maintenance of these? Um, areas, the 35 acres that you're talking about, once so we're, we do this? That's a good question. Um, so we're in conversations with GDOT on how that will take place. I do know that the areas that we do improve, we, it is our understanding at this point that we will have to take over but the But will we have to cut the area um, um, where right now the state cuts it? Correct. So you would you would take over the, the maintenance of that area. Now we're trying to, at this point, we're, we're working with them to see if we can basically draw boundaries so that if we're only doing half of the interchange, like uh, three of the four that we are, we're doing the inbound to Douglas County half, can we split that so that we're not taking <coughs> 35 acres but only 17 and a half? Yeah, because the maintenance is going to be an ongoing uh, cost. To it the is county. definitely something to take into consideration. All right. All right. I can go back. But on top of that, we'd like to say that we are, so we are planning to plant plants not only native to Georgia but also. Uh, for size, uh, it's for terms of size that we grow, um, the way we want to, the size we want to, there's not that ongoing, we're, we're limiting the amount of maintenance that will have to be done. I always say they put too many crepe myrtles too close together. Just, uh, they turn into a tree if you give them some room. There's no doubt. <laughs> and they bloom a lot better. And if they so. just quit cutting them, right? Just yes. let them grow. <laughs> yes. All right. I get back. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Vice Chairman Robinson, yeah, um, again, one more time, I'm, I'm encouraged to see the administration um, maintaining the county. You know, we talk about our buildings um, need to be maintained and upgraded because they've deteriorated over time or just never been addressed. Our roads have never really been maintained consistently. Um, and, and now, obviously, I mean, it's a manicure. It's just <coughs> a higher touch, a higher quality, and I'm, I'm encouraged to watch this evolve. I'm just sitting back, okay, very good, um, to see this, because it does matter, right? Appearances matter, and for your appearance, you've got to put money into it, you've got to put effort into it, whatever it is to you for appearance, um, to be able to attract. Um, and and, and one, you, you could say, well, what's wrong with it as is? Well, okay, well, uh, it's in the eye of the beholder. Um, and what they want to invest their, their families in moving out here or move their business out here, whatever the case may be, it, 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 it improves pride, it improves the steam, all those things do matter, right? And so I, I'm, I'm that, to see the leadership now, stunt, you know, I'm sure I give y'all credit for this because obviously I'm, I'm not a, a gardener or anything like that, but I, but I know the impact of, of what it means to, to, to add. Um, and so just to see the county beginning to be shaped now, it just, it just sort of, is being taken to a whole other level, and, it, it, and, I, and I see it's like, okay, I, all right, I see where we're going with this, and I'm seeing the little things on cleaning this place up, touching it, which is, it, it's just evolving, like anything should. It should evolve. It should change. And so um, seeing it grow up, seeing it go, it, it mature, but at the same point not losing its character areas. Like, there can be a coexistence of difference. Um, the, the West, right, the, I wanted to hear how you were going to say that, the rural, uh, rural West is totally different than uh, what I call, consider the suburban, urban East. Uh -huh. Two different areas. Uh, they, they both are equal in that they, they are what they are, but then they can, they can be maintained in their own identity. Right? Just because one exists doesn't mean the other loses. <coughs> and that's important. I mean, there's, there's an object lesson here. That is probably for, not for the staff here, but for the broader community to understand where this is going. In other words, like, okay, you got all these four different commission areas. They're, they're very di different. They're represented by very different people. They can coexist. Um, and, and, and again, it's just the attention to it. Uh, and be sensitive to not to only look in one's own bubble, but recognize that like, well, we have multiple bubbles here in this sea of life. So uh, I'm encouraged by what I see. Uh, by this damn chair, I know you put a lot of effort into this, so I, again, I, I, I have no credit in this, but just to acknowledge that, that this, the, the end of this, I hope, will turn out very, very beautiful to put us on, on the docket. 
My last question is about monuments. Do we have? Um, Mark. 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 Yes, I was leaning when I asked it. Mark. Way in. The monument signs. Yeah. Just. Yes. yes. Well, we're. So we have. We went out for an RFP. Okay. So we have evaluated those, and we will be bringing those to the uh, purchase and oversight committee, the next committee. So we have a recommendation for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there'll be one at uh, Liberty and one at Thornton, both inbound into the county. Inbound. So mm -hmm. yes. Inbound. Westbound will mm -hmm. be eastbound from the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, when you're talking about monuments, you're not talking about like St. Louis arcs across the highway type thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can't explore that. No, okay. <laughs> a little bit smaller. Yeah, right here. Okay. I, I, I knew the answer. I just wanted to. Thank you. That would be nice. <coughs> thank, thank you so much. And if we could, uh, Mark, if we could just share with the Board of Commissioners uh, why uh, Highway 5 is not on here in Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill, I believe, is a diamond diversion plan, but I noticed trees are being cut up Chapel Hill. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, well, they're being cut all over, coming down the interstate on all those. And I think it's part of the, you know, Georgia DOT had told us they were going to start they trimming some of the back. trees, but you know, they didn't realize it was to this scale. So we're trying to figure out exactly how much more will be cut. <laughs> so we're in the process of figuring that out. And then but Highway, Highway 5. 5 and Chapel Hill are um, future projects um, for changes to those intersections. Yeah, These are G dot projects. Yeah, G dot projects. So we thought if we go out there and do something for those, it's just they're gonna have to tear them up. Those uh, projects, mm -hmm. and so that's the reason why we have. Just and then the county Fair Road is the city's work. The city's that. doing that one. Yes, ma'am. So just want to make it for the record, because I said, why not Highway Five? It's getting ready to be a project, and then same thing with Chapel Hill, because you know I wanted all of them done. But Mark, of course, is an engineer. He's a chairman. He's just going to tear it up. I said, oh, we don't want to put all our hard work in them, and they have to, you know, tear everything down. So just be patient with us. We are coming back to those. We're not going to uh, put a death ear on them, but we just can't <clears throat> address them right now because G dot work is planned for the future. All right. Thank you so much. Great presentation. Yep. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The commissioners would like this. I just uh, thank you for giving me a sneak preview the other day, myself and Mark. All right. We'll move to Splost. Mr. Terry Gable is, is Terry's not here today. I'll oh. be filling in for him. Okay, well, I'm excited, and, and I'm excited. So, when you uh, approach our parks and recreations, there's a couple of parks that I want to have questions about. Uh, I believe that I, I want to talk about some funding for these parks, which is Bill Art. Uh, I want to look at uh, Fair Play, and then also uh, Deer Lake. I, I understand I've just been seeing some stuff run around. And I'm certainly not allergic to Facebook, but I saw some stuff that said we're running out of funding, and I need just some explanation if you can help me with that. Okay, I'll try. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you could just state your name for us, sir. I will. Yes, okay. ma'am. I'm Russell Small with Morgan Russell. Mountain Valley. Yes. Um, Terry is on vacation this week, so he asked me to stand in. So I'll go through the uh, the slideshow and I'll try to answer your questions. If there are any questions I, I can't answer, I'll get with Terry when he returns and certainly get you an answer okay. on, on, on any of those. So to get started, um, this is the uh, the chart you look at every month. It's just a division of the, uh, the money that will be coming in by uh, Fire and Emergency Services, Parks, and uh, DOT. Um, you can see the date, fire and EMS down in the bottom right hand corner, uh, spent almost uh, $14 million today. Uh, transportation is uh, $7.8 million and parks is uh, a little over $2 million today. Um, initial estimate versus actual cost, this is for the last year. You can see for the last year, it's a month by month, each month, except for January and February of this year. Uh, all the rest of the months have come in above the projection. January and February were a little bit uh, below the projection. Uh, this is uh, the, the total splash collected for splash years one, two, and so far in three. As you can see, uh, the original projected total was uh, 52.2 million and has actually been collected uh, almost 54 million, so uh, about 1.7 million over projections to date. Of course, that could be subject to change. Hopefully, it'll continue to go up. Hopefully, projections will continue to go up. Um, this is last year three revenue totals. Um, 
for, for May, we got the $2,247,000. Uh, and you can see that was over $200,000 above the original May projection. And the total year three overage uh, is uh, $479,000. That's uh, through May. Um, and then the service and payment obligations, you can see it, there's payment due uh, October 1st, 2019 to $959,000. And then uh, April 1st will be the, the next big one at $18.9 million. I'm uh, getting into the fire and EMS projects. This is the list of uh, completed projects uh, to date. Um, the uh, countywide digital radio <coughs> system. All of the sites except for the final site are complete. Um, the final site, the board uh, approved the uh, memorandum of agreement that was needed uh, to submit documents to SHPO for review. Those documents, uh, the contractor did submit those to SHPO and, and are working with SHPO now to try to get approval of those. Uh, that seems to be going pretty good so far, hopefully. We'll get those approved soon. They can get out there and get started and uh, get everything done by the end of August uh, so that we can get the equipment in and get the testing started on the system. Um, right now it's kind of uh, in the process of, of working through uh, with SHPO to get it approved. Um, the uh, ambulance procurement um, this year. Um, purchased one ambulance and right now it's in fabrication um, and it's expected around the first week of uh, October for delivery. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, trucks and fire agents um, also won this year and we have another one with bids due uh, July 26th, that's, uh, that's Friday. Bids will be coming in on that on Friday. Um, the Station 3 renovation, Station 3 is complete. Um, except for some uh, punch list items that the contractor's working on now. Um, also, the, uh, the trailer that's out there is scheduled to be taken out on August 8th. So, uh, but um, it, it, it's basically complete and up and running. Um, and hopefully the contractor will be done with all this punch stuff, especially stuff before long will be out of there. Mm -hmm. um, staff vehicle procurement. Um, two trucks were ordered back in June. Um, and go and wait on the final price for outfitting those. There might be some money left where uh, we might be able to, uh, to purchase another one, but we're going to wait and see. Is that right on that one? Yes. Yeah. That's what I had to tell you. Um, station number nine, you already heard a little bit on that one today. Um, that one, there's a, uh, it's going to be on the, board to, the board's agenda to uh, consider uh, issuing an RFP for the design for the uh, the changes that go along with that building. Um, getting into transportation projects. Uh, there's some uh, completed projects to date. That's the, the list we have so far. Um, the resurfacing program and the LMIG is combined with SPLICE and LMIG. Um, the contractor, um, uh, C.W. Matthews, I think they completed uh, Lee Road back in May, and then they uh, demobilized at their back. They came back last week, so they're getting that program started and up and running again, so you should, should be seeing some progress on that. Mm -hmm. uh, pavement evaluations. Um, that's, uh, that's some work we're actually doing at Moreland Alta Belly, and right now, 99% um, of the roads have been ridden and evaluated, and we're in the process of putting the data into the paver system, and 95% of that data is in the computer. Um, anticipated being done with all that and getting everything checked by the end of the month and at that time we'll be ready to start uh, training with the county so the county can uh, take over the paper system and run the, run the system moving forward. Um, Stewart Mill Road at Reynolds Road. Um, this one, the right of plans have been delivered to Miguel. They're under review. Uh, and then uh, they're continuing with their roadway plans and our uh, shooting to have those by the end of the month. Bright Star Road at John, Rest, uh, John West, I'm sorry, there are um, three parcels um, that still yet to close, but we're hoping to do that in August. Um, and once those parcels close, we can start looking at sending that one to, uh, to purchasing and putting it out for bid. Um, Sweetwater Church at uh, Doris Road. That project is going to advertise for bids starting uh, the 22nd. Um, what's that tomorrow? Starting tomorrow. All right. And then uh, Chapel Hill Road intersections. Um, this one, um, there's uh, a lot of parcels to get on this one, over 30 parcels, uh, maybe 40. 
um, that's uh, getting underway with that. I'm still working on the plans, um, making good progress on the plans, but the big thing on this one is to to uh, deal with the parcels and what acquisition we're going to have to do, and uh, that's going to take a while, probably somewhere in the range of a year or maybe maybe longer, but uh, uh, starting to, uh, to move forward. <coughs> Highway 5 at Douglas Boulevard, um, that's the right turn lane. Um, I understand that uh, the county is going to, um, at some point, consider an, a contract for our on-call consultants to do design work, and this is one of the ones that will be assigned to an on-call consultant uh, once they're on board. Uh, Post Road uh, Bridge at Dog River, that's uh, the GDOT project. We talked about that one before. I know the time I was here before, and. Uh, in the meetings I've been in with uh, Terry and the department heads all along. But, um, the contractor is scheduled to move in um, uh, after the first of the year, early 2020, to get that project started. Um, Lithia Springs Elementary School. Um, it's in the right-of-way phase. Um, there are three parcels associated with that. Um, and um, I think you're working on that, Miguel? Mm -hmm. uh, working on the getting those parcels lined up. Uh, Chestnut Log Middle School, um, kind of the same thing. I think there's five parcels involved there. And then uh, New Manchester High. Um, New Manchester High School, the uh, designers uh, finalizing an encroachment permit with uh, GOT to get that submitted to GOT for uh, get the permit to work in the right of way there, uh, DOT. Whitestone Culvert, um, the contractor is on board, but uh, it has been determined that the footings for the culvert um, are in need of uh, some redesign. They aren't quite big enough to support the structure that's going to have to go in there. So right now we're in the process of working with the designer and the contractor to get that uh, footing change finalized so that it can be priced, find out what the, what the cost will be for that. Um, Street lakes on uh, I-20 exit ramps. Um, I understand the county. Uh, Miguel and Mark have been talking with Georgia Power and uh, Greystone about getting proposals for that. Um, I'm really close on that. I should have. I thought it was going to happen by this meeting, but we didn't make it. We're waiting on a couple more uh, little segments. Hopefully, we'll have it by the next meeting. We'll have those ready. Okay. Highway Mount 92 at uh, uh, Mount Vernon, uh, GDOT's doing a traffic study for that, uh, for that intersection. Um, and um, that one uh, may have the potential, from what I understand, to become a, a GDOT project. Um, but uh, uh, the traffic study is underway over the GDOT. Um, Highway 92 and uh, river, Riverside uh, traffic so signal. Um, again, this is one that uh, I believe is going to be done by an on-call consultant. Once, the, uh, once those consultants are on board. Um, the uh, supplemental LMIG striping match, the, uh, the, the match of funds have been set up, and um, that process will be, uh, be getting underway, and you're going to be taking care of that right together. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the uh, <coughs> the Lee Road Widening Project, uh, of course, this is a county a DOT partnership. Um, in the, Board has approved the contract to, uh, to update and complete the design, which is uh, uh, about to get underway. Um, probably is already underway, but it's, uh, it's, it's going to be, it's going to take a while to get done, and we're probably looking at uh, putting it out to bid late next year or early the following year. All right, and then uh, park and recreation projects. Um, there's a list of some of the uh, completed, uh, or of the completed projects to date. And then uh, Boundary Waters Restroom Concession Box Press Box Building, which will be going on this completed list pretty soon. Uh, as y'all know, we had uh, the uh, ribbon cutting out there July 10th, uh, well attended events, a uh, really nice building. Um, and uh, the project went, uh, went pretty well, but um, the certificate of occupancy has been issued, so the building uh, is uh, ready for use. Um, the soccer field lighting was, it was, a, it was a different contractor. Um, but as y'all know, the power source was located within the building, but the, the lights have been tested. They're up and running. Um, they're in good shape, and the contract will be submitting its final invoice on that reason. Uh, 
Deer Lake Tennis Courts resurfacing and lighting. The, the, uh, the demolition is underway out there, um, and uh, the the design to uh, to put it back is also underway. But uh, working with uh, WSA, we're going to have to do another uh, hydrology study or a hydrology study. I shouldn't have said another. We're going to have to do a hydrology study on that. Um, so we'll have to get that hydrology study completed and get it permitted and then put it out for bid to uh, find out the final cost on that. Um, Multi-purpose rec center, um, it's, uh, it's in permitting. Um, well, actually, it's a, I think it's done with permitting. Well, the civil's approved, it's still, the building is still being reviewed at this point in time. Um, but uh, with uh, the approval by WSA, is, is the building approval goes as expected, then we should be able to uh, put that one out for bid uh, later in the month, later in August. And then the senior center is kind of tracking along the same track. We should be able to put that together uh, later in August. It's been submitted for permitting and uh, uh, reviewing uh, authorities have uh, returned some comments and they're being addressed, but it wasn't anything alarming, um, just typical things. And so uh, uh, that one will be ready to put out for bid uh, in August as well. We have some bid documents for both of these that we're reviewing. Uh, Terry sent me late last week and I'll be reviewing this week and give it him on when he gets by. Um, Bill Oak Park, Bill Oak Park and Fair Play Park, these are two that have been bid. Um, and as I understand it, uh, right now we have uh, two different low bidders on these projects and we're kind of holding these, uh, waiting to see how Deerlick turns out um, because Deerlick was higher on the priority list. Um, and once we get Deerlick, get that, like I said earlier, get that permitting completed, then we can get it out for bid. Um, that Fair Play, I just talked about that as part of the uh, Deer League. And then the uh, Fair Play Lights replacement, um, the power zone, that project's basically complete. Um, they're working the punch list now. Uh, so this one will be going on the completed list before long. And then uh, miscellaneous equipment purchases. Um, there's been two security vehicles purchased, um, and then earlier today on the agenda there was a vehicle there. Was that, that was a splash funded for that uh, yeah. for the sales um, at the youth coordinator. Mm -hmm. And let's see, <coughs> that's it. That's uh, that's all. Yeah, questions from board commissioners, Vice Robinson. Yeah, I, I've got a couple of them. Again, I'm okay with this format, so we have to bounce over a couple of them. Let's go back to the road ratings um, component. Uh, road ratings is something that we, uh, we at the pleasure of the Board of Commissioners, um, amended the contract to Moreland to be able to get this done, as is our discretion. Right. Um, that being said, um, you have a um, project that, um, again, will provide us some valuable information for long term capital planning, right? Um, again, it's about the roads, it's about um, our citizens being able to experience their tax dollars on a daily basis. I think the last, Miguel, remind me, 700 miles, I think we came up with some figure, it may cost us about $140 million to do all roads, um, uh, give or take, um, an entire single slot to put into the jail. Uh, that being said, um, I think this morning's meeting, we were told that probably Maybe 40% of the roads are in dire need of, 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 of being, never being resurfaced or just, just absolutely needed. Is that about right? I'm going to start with that. Well, of the, of the 660 miles that have been uh, yep. written so far, yep. um, in, in round numbers, That's fine. about 300 are in um, pretty good shape, um, and about 250 are in, it's grouped in five categories. I think it's... Um, Let's see, good, average, fair, poor. <clears throat> it's five categories on the range from fair to, to good. And 660 miles have been ridden. Around 300, around 300 of them. Yeah, okay. Around 300 of them are in, in pretty good shape. About 250 of them are in poor shape um, or very poor and probably in need of doing something and the others fall in the middle of about average. So that's where they are right now. That, 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 that answer is about, about 40 percent of our roads. So in setting the public's expectation, um, so perhaps that's half of perhaps the 140 million, so 70 million, right? And again, 
uh, Director Hallman, we're just, I'm using these as markers for us to sort of like, what, what does that mean? How, how do we plan for that? Setting expectations that you're not going to get to everybody. You're not, never going to be able to get to every project every year, every intent. Mm -hmm. If you do planning, you can, there is a finite um, a set of roads, set of parks, set of everything. And if you lay out a maintenance plan over time, it, it, may, it may not be in our generation, but you can get there uh, recognizing that you know you have funding. Yes, you have funding, but funding is limited. It only is going to go so far. Uh, and so I just wanted to use that as a marker for the dollars, but then I'm going to move over into the parks, which is um, our, um, um, what do you call it, the um, press box, the, the new concession stand at, 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 at um, Boundary Waters. And, I, and I, we were doing the press conference, and I set the expectations and made a comment at the end of my, uh, of my remarks, which is, this was started back in 2002. It's almost 20 years later we're able to deliver against that. Right? And I also <coughs> set expectations that everything that, you, that in today's, like, I would like to get, you know, what they call the, quish, the Christmas wish list to, back in the Sears back in the day when I was going through, like, well, this is my wish list. But let's just, you know, and his parents just said, well, okay. You just let them think what they're going to think. I, I know, now know that as a parent. Like, well, okay, but, you know, this is all we can afford. And life happens that even what I intended to do, based on priorities, well, this broke down, so I had to fix that. And so, therefore, I couldn't get to this. It's, it, it's important that we don't, <clears throat> that as leaders, we don't, we don't treat citizens the wrong way or set wrong expectations. It's something it's important to be honest about where things are. It's like, well, we can, that's the list. We're not obligated, we're obligated in categories, not projects. We're not out of funds, we're not running out of funds. It's like, well, it's only limited money. It is what it is. Now, you can sit there and say, well, we can raise it to accommodate the rest of it. Well, that's a whole different conversation. But when it comes to this plus, it, it's just like in 2002, it's like, well, it took us 20 years to finish this thing off. It, it, it took us 20 years to finish the football. What, what, when we do the football field two years ago, it took us 18, 16 years to finish the football field. Well, all the kids that could have benefited from it and grew up, they're off in college. We're not doing things for today in government. It's always for tomorrow. Yeah, you can get your roles paid today, but certain things are just going to take time. And you shouldn't play with the minds of the citizens by making promises that, like, no, here's the list. Properly educate them on how this thing plays out, but recognizing you're not going to get to everything. And so I'm, I'm careful when I'm looking at this list and I'm, I'm doing the projection. I'm like, okay, I'm looking at the burn rate, right? It's not hard to look at, okay, right? Yes, that is growing. Yes, it's growing, but it's still a steady growth. And so, you know, when we, we, we use projects to sort of, with the citizen, I'm like, that's not a good thing. Don't know, you know, um, because you can't control what you can't control. Um, and, and I get people want things, but that's where we have to set, set proper prioritization on things, and, and there needs to be advocacy. But I'm looking at this project list, and we're at what, what we're going into. Uh, this is my last comment. Year three? Are we, Mark? Yes, yes, yes sir. Mark. We're in the middle of year three. Year three, uh, and we bonded five years, in the pro and this is six years, right? Mm -hmm. And so our tough years, um, Director Hallman, is what? Next year, next year? This the fourth <coughs> and fifth year? Fourth and fifth year. Fourth and fifth year. So we, so it's really going to get tight in the sense of the things that are coming online, it won't be as busy as it is right now. We're going through a lot of stuff and we're keeping up stuff our our queue, but at some point, this thing's going, it's, it's going to be one or two projects that are going to consume uh, just because of the spend. Um, and, that, and it's important that, you know, expectations are set. It takes time. Government is slow. Um, it is what it is. Now, you can accelerate this thing by, you know, you can throw taxes at it all day long. But if you want to set expectations, like, okay, well, based on where we're setting our, our growth at, where we're setting our growth at, then it's like, you're only going to get so much done. So our narrative has to be consistent with, they have to line up. <coughs> if you're only going to fund this much, you got to quit saying all this. Right? You can't say this and only do this because, like, okay, that's going to crash. The two are not aligned. And that, that only thing I try to do is make sure to say something like, just from my little world, my little corner, like, gosh, y'all need to understand this now. I don't want to sell, sell false hope about what we're doing here. We only can do so much. 
That's the only thing I want to get through. But you can only do so much. It's only so much that everybody can bear. Right? So I know we try to get these points. I'm like, man, forget points. Forget, like, guys, y'all not going to get there. And so I'm like, looking at this, like, this steady, guys. Stuff is still going up. There's still inflation. I'm like, okay. And I'm, I'm not, like, I can't script anybody, especially my peers. Like, they're, they're, they're free, more agents with independence and sovereignty in their own little worlds. I'm, I'm okay with that. But for the broader citizens, it's important that as we, we, we get through this, that there's no false hope, no broken promises. Well, you promised that, like, no, no promises. We're, we are doing the best we can based on what we're, we're given as taxes, right? These taxes were given to us, and we were given power to make decisions against those taxes, and it's only what it allows us to do. We, we have a list of so many needs, but you can only do so much. So it's important that we properly just be honest about what we're looking at, uh, and so that nobody is, um, that, that we're not sending the wrong message. But I think all of us, I, I don't think, all of us care about the county. We, we care about, uh, we, we care for the wholeness of the county that for it to be well. But I just, I, I, I hear certain sentiments and I'm like, okay, well, why are they saying that? Or why, are that, why is that being messaged? And, and, and so I, I just want to make proper that these guys are doing a great job, Madam Chair, of sort of keeping this, this massive thing going, keeping us on track but recognizing that, okay, at some point, we're going to get on the back end of this thing. And I, I, we're almost at the turn. Not quite. We're almost at the turn. At the end of this year, we'll be at the turn. And so it's how we close this out. So it's not so much as how we start it, but it's how, um, make sure we got the legs to finish this thing. And I'm just, I'm just watching this now, Chair. So I yeah, just want to just put it out there. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Geiger. Yes. Um, how many of the roads have not been paved that were on the schedule? Where, where do we stand with the unpaid roads? So they just started the uh, 2019 Squash and Hell Meet. They just started last week, except for Lee Road. They did Lee Road, came back in last week, and they started out. I think they did Tyree, maybe a couple more. But they just have started the rest of the list. Uh, so we finished all of 2018? No, we're doing those in-house. Yes, sure we, we've uh, done just about... Uh, 90 percent. 90 percent. Of what year? 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, but all of 2019 has <coughs> not been, been done. Is that no, ma'am. CW Matthews is the contractor. They just moved back. They're going to do everything. Yes, ma'am. We're just finishing up We're 2018. We're finishing up that big 2018 list. So, when you finish that, what do you? What's the in-house people going to be doing? Well, we have a lot of maintenance work that's <laughs> been deferred. It's I know, but you've money got money you've got a paver and stuff, so you're not going to be paving anything. Well, we're, we're going to be maintaining some roads, not necessarily paving. We're going to be patching and doing dirt roads and signage and all of that other stuff. Okay, um, I've received a lot of complaints about South Baggett Road, which is a dirt road. It's being used as a cut through because of the bridge at Post Road. So um, you went out there and you put calcium chloride, then you came back with the grader and graded. <coughs> Is that done in the right sequence? They said it was the other day when it rained, it was like glass. It was very, very dangerous and, and slicky. That, that is one, uh, one issue with calcium chloride. If it rains on it soon after you put it down, <coughs> it's, it's gone. You lose it. So I think we had talked about putting melons or even paving a portion of it where the <coughs> sextons, where all the dust flies up into their houses and everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, Mark had said something about we may have some left in my district, some funds left in my district. That is a possibility, and speaking of millings, we have the High Point Road project that we're looking to do. Uh, in we, do. we do. We do. <laughs> yeah. And there, there is a possibility of doing others uh, yeah. as well. So okay, but we, we, we talked about doing, uh, when we rode out with the chair lady, mm -hmm. we talked about the millions uh, around the houses right there at the dirt park. Right. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, <coughs> um, Bright Star Road, and I don't know who to address this. Uh, so it has not been bid out. How many more uh, 
acquisitions do we have to go? We have two more acquisitions to complete. Is there a hold up on them? Getting uh, the, the final signatures. Uh -huh. In some instances, the uh, one of the property owners is agreeable to move forward, and the other one has not signed as of yet. So uh, we're we're trying to get that finalized so we can have it. But we do have a design, and we yes. have a right of way acquisition, That's and nice. we think <clears throat> that after August we should be able to bid it out. That is <clears throat> you think you're going to make some leeway with that one holdout? Yes, we believe so. <clears throat> okay. Um, cause that, that project has been so slow. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, along with um, Sweetwater Road and Doris Road. Uh, where are we? We're bidding that out as we speak? That is correct. Okay. The bids will actually uh, be sent to the contractors tomorrow. All right. It will be in the paper tomorrow. So to follow our, our normal ad process. <coughs> okay. We will we'll get the bids back in on August the 23rd. And Paulden County is helping with that. They're, they're paying half of it or they're just paying half of it? Red light or what? Uh, yes, Commissioner. They they are they have agreed uh, to pick up half of the cost, uh, the estimated cost of the project. Of the project. Correct. Okay. So um, the estimates that's out there on your list, Mark, that you gave us, is that including? Um, is that excluding their portion of the cost? It's including our cost only. Okay. All right. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. But we, that's being bid out. Now, Highway 5. <laughs> yeah. Explain to me about a uh, on-call consultant. Is that for the plan, <coughs> uh, the, the design of the intersection? It is. It is. So uh, the, the, there's nobody out there that just designs intersections. Uh, you correct. have to have a consultant to correct. do Correct. That, that, that is correct. It is, we're going through through a process of qualifying design firms to work on any number of our projects. That is going to, that is on the agenda before the Transportation Committee tomorrow. And based on their recommendation, it may be forwarded with their recommendation for the uh, board of Commissioners to consider. Now that's just for the consultant. That is just. But not for the design firm. Well, that's the same. It, so it is that's the same, the same firm. thing? Okay, yeah. that's what I was wondering. Is the consultant different than the designer? No, no, no. It's the same. <laughs> okay, so they should be able to uh, design it. Because we have a deadline on that intersection to get half of it paid by the city of Douglasville. Uh, so we, it's something that we don't need to drag our feet on. No. So how long do you think the design will be? Well, there is coordination with GDOT, so we're hopeful that perhaps six, seven, eight months might be the time for that. Okay, and when does it, the uh, memorandum of understanding uh, mature on the, uh, with the city of Douglasville on that subject, I mean the, the intersection? The end of next year. And the SDS? No. <clears throat> the Memorandum of Understanding <clears throat> with the City of Douglasville yes, for the, I think it's the intersection. End of 2020, if memory serves me. So, if it's going to take, how long did you say just for the design? Uh, I would say uh, six to eight months for the design. Okay, say it takes eight months. That's putting us a half a year. Are we? Do we have to have the uh, project finished? by the end of next year? Or do we have to just have it started? I don't want to lose I'd have to look at that their track. half of the um, money. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. We need to expedite this whole process with, uh, for that intersection, because that's crucial. That is crucial. It's crucial to the mall. A lot of people don't go to the mall because they have to go that way. So, uh, <coughs> I don't know how you can speed it up, but it does need to be 
sped up because it's crucial to Highway 5 and anybody that lives down that area. Well, uh, uh, Commissioner, the, it, it's in process to, to hit the Transportation Committee tomorrow based on their recommendation to be the next board meeting to enter into the uh, agreements with the design consultants. As soon as we have that in place, we will issue task orders to one of those firms to begin the design process. Can you give them a deadline? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I would suggest we give them a, a <coughs> deadline because we need to make sure we do not lose half the funding for that intersection from the city of Douglasville. And they want it as badly as we want it. So uh, I would just uh, ask that you try to expedite that as much as possible. We will. Okay, uh, and I'll try to hurry on. Um, <laughs> uh, the Dog River Bridge. I noticed uh, you had like 500000 allocated, but we've only spent twenty, and because we're just responsible for the right-of-way acquisitions, right? Correct. So why is $500,000 put out there in the budget? It was on this slide. Yeah, Did I, I look think, at it wrong? No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, allocated that way initially, but what will happen is once we finish the right-of-way acquisition, then that figure, whatever it turns out to be, then the figure will be adjusted to... Well, how to many, uh, there wasn't but about two or three right-of-ways that you had to get. Correct. Uh, and how many you've already gotten? One. One. Okay. Is so we only have two more left, Correct. and so we're no way going to spend five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, okay. So that will go to other uh, bridge projects or whatever. Okay. Um, Commissioner Goddard. Yeah. So the agreement with the city of Douglasville on the northbound turn lanes, northbound right turn lane, um, that says the county county shall complete the project no later than July first, twenty twenty two. Okay. Okay, guys. <laughs> well, I think you originally said 2020, so I was kind of worried about that. Okay. Yeah, so it's July 2022. They originally gave us a shorter yeah, deadline. Sure. And then yeah, they, they, we went back and asked them to extend it out. Okay, very good. And then uh, Whitestone. Yeah. Okay. Um, ten years those people have been waiting for a bridge out there. But. Um, we, I talked with Mark about it, and he had mentioned that we the footings were wrong and they were redoing it, and that it should be a change order should be coming through uh, pretty soon. It's on the uh, transportation committee meeting agenda for Mark. So it should be on our next meeting. Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Not tomorrow night, but the next one. Right. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> not tomorrow night. Uh, is there a reason why it can't be? Yes, yeah, because we, we did that last time. It was, we were told we, we needed to wait. That was oh, I see it. Okay. No, I was thinking if you were talking about the committee meeting. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, no, I, it I'm will sorry. be on the committee I understand. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, it's just very important that all the, boot, all the um, items be kept as as close to budget. I know uh, construction costs have gone up. However, when we change the scope and we keep adding this, <clears throat> this, and this, then it changes, it pushes projects in other districts off the, you know, off the table, really. But um, one other intersection I wanted to address, and we, I share it with uh, Commissioner Carthen, is the Reynolds Road. Um, we have been told for over a year it's in the design stage. Why? <coughs> that intersection was, a, was on the 2002 splash and got kicked off because of money running out. We do not want that to happen. It's really more important to her area than mine. I just have the through lane. She's going to have all the residents that's going to be using that intersection to turn. Very dangerous intersection. Wrecks all the time. And uh, this is, this should be a priority. It is, and it's the first one on the priority list in the intersection 
intersection and operations category of transportation. But where's the design? We've been waiting for a year for yeah, the design. Yeah. Commissioner, we had, in fact, we had a meeting with a design consultant last week uh, to make sure that they understood the urgency of finalizing the design. They had some questions related to how much of the work uh, we were going to do, uh, whether they had the ability to design it so that we would allow them to close the road to install the culverts. And that was the issue. No, uh, initially and normally, we would not look to totally shut down a road to get a component of a project in. That would have, they would have had to design it differently. Uh, we, uh, they indicated at the meeting last week that if we allowed them to close the road over a weekend, from Friday to Monday morning, mm -hmm. uh, they they uh, believed that they could get the culvert, the contract could get the culvert installed in that time period. Based on that, we gave them direction to design it for a road closure situation. Yeah. So that was the last hurdle. Now they're uh, going full bore on the design based on the ability to, when the time comes, uh, we will allow them to shut down the road. So what's the timetable on this intersection? In terms of the design? Well, construction. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody's interested in. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give you the components. We'll get to the construction. The design, now that they uh, know which way to go, should take another two to three months. After that, we will begin the right-of-way acquisition process. Now, there's a total of eight parcels, as I recall. Two of them we had already acquired early on when this project was first designed. The, the, the issue is there's additional right-of-way required on both of them. So we have eight parcels to acquire. We're beginning the process now of... Just a few feet. Yeah, slippers, just you know, <coughs> you know, 10 feet or, or so. Uh, so we'll have to finalize. We'll be doing that between, uh, when, the, when the design is completed and the end of the year into spring. So mm -hmm. we will be ready to advertise the project for construction in the spring. I would urge you to <coughs> put this, uh, <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me, I would urge you to put <coughs> this as a priority. It is a very important uh, thoroughfare. It's a very in, important intersection to two districts, and we need to do. Um, we need to give people um, deadlines. We need this by such and such date. <coughs> I used to work for a general contractor. I know how we can push things on. Them. So uh, <coughs> I just urge you to look at this because it is uh, very, very important to both of our districts. Understood. All right. Thank you. Can I yield back now? I apologize for taking so long. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Mr. Small, and thank you so much, uh, Director. <coughs> I'm just going to wrap it up in a nutshell. I just, the only thing I can go back to or reflect back sometimes is surgery, and I'm going to go surgical for just a second. We have uh, I realized Deer Lake Park was uh, probably a lot worse than what was anticipated when the surgeons got in there and looked at it. But of course, we have two more patients waiting, which is Fair Play and Bill R. So we don't cancel surgeries. We, we find a way to get those patients done. So what I want to do is uh, work with Mark, and we'll come up with some ideas to see what we can do to pick those parks up and get them done. Uh, Mark and May requires to move outside of the out of the splash to pick some of those up to just to we may just need some assistance to get them done. But I don't want to have a closed mind. I want to well, right now what we're waiting on we're waiting on the bids to come in. We were a little ahead of schedule on the concession stand to Bill Arp and Fair Play. Um, which is a good thing. We were ahead of schedule, but we need to wait on Deer Lick, uh, so we know the exact numbers. Deer Lick, the Most Purpose Recreation Center and the uh, senior center. So, because of the uh, fair play and Phil Arp were further down the list than those, we need to know exactly what those construction um, bid come in at. Right, but and then we'll be able to tell. Uh, 
Yeah, but also I want us to have a plan, a yes. second plan in place. Of, uh, Look at the scope. The scope at it. Just see what we could do in case we think yes. outside we so are, we can get those done. We have been. We've been discussing <coughs> different ideas on different scenarios, but we don't know exactly where the court's going to put us yet. Okay. So when we when we hope we know this, 90 days? Um, so, Deer Lake's probably going to bid out. Let's see if we mention it. So, Deer Lake bids in. I think they're waiting on the water authority. Yeah. Waiting on it. We've got to do a hydrology the study there. Um, and then the Senior Center and the um, Multi Purpose Recreation Center. Oh, the purpose is still under review. Yeah, but when when do we expect it going after bid? August, I think. Yeah, I think it will be able to put out the bid in August. Yeah, so you probably look at it late August. Yeah, so they've had it for weeks. September, <laughs> October, we should we should know have a better idea of where we stand in that category. Okay. Apart from that category. Okay. Regardless, we still want to move forward with a plan to support. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's fine. Well, we can't come up with a plan until we know. Till you exactly. <coughs> okay. Yeah, until we know. Patience is the virtue. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. We'll move on to the next item. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Uh, David, do you have anything? I'm so sorry. If you could, um, Mr. Good, did you want to give us a quick update? <coughs> Uh oh. Yeah. <coughs> and I'm not going to take up too much time. It's going to be about three minutes. Okay. Okay. Again, I'm David Good, Communication Director for the SPLOS program. And as you can see, uh, right now we have a total of 90 vendors. Of those 90 vendors, 33 of them are local right here in Douglas County. Another 27 are is also considered local, but they're just right outside the county. And then another 14 are 30 miles outside, and the last 14 are outside the state, such as uh, Motorola. Now, right now we have 64 total projects in all. Of those 64 projects, 34 of them are active projects, and 30 are completed. In the completed list, you will always see in your update book. Uh, let me make sure I get this right. Okay, there it goes. Uh, right now, as you can see, uh, we are about 67% of the program is considered local. Um, the, the last percentage, of course, is outside of local. And right now, because of you guys' efforts, we have really gotten a lot of local um, participation, especially lately. And here is the, as you can see, the different vendor amounts. Um, Douglas County vendors is a little bit over 3.2 million. Um, the, within 30 miles of Douglas County, that's 17.2 million. And then the, and that makes the total local vendors a little bit over $20 million. It's about $20.5 million. And that is, a, that is a drastic uptake of about 6 or $7 million. And uh, the percentage of active SPLOS projects with minority companies, 59% uh, are non-minority, 41% are minority. Uh, that's also a, a great uptick as well. I believe last time, I believe that number was closer to 30%. And that is actually it for me. I took about two minutes. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson has a question for the comment. Yes, Commissioner. Yeah, just, um, so participation um, is improving in all expected categories, looks like. In, in other words, um, our, our citizens are, are being able to take advantage of, of these opportunities, those, those people who are shovel ready, uh, uh, which I think is always important. I, I wanna, I'm going to piggyback on the, the, the prior spots because it related previous question, which is, all right, you've got two big buildings that are going live, a senior center and a, com and a community center. And obviously, I, I, I love a local to partake of that, all right? But I don't know how, how many people here are big enough to, to do that and bond and do all those things and we'll, we'll find out. My, my question is, and Mark, you can help sort of frame this or whomever, is to go and put both of these out here at the same time where one firm is able to bid on, on both or is it that, no? My, my preference is to break this up. I, I, I just don't want somebody just to monopolize anything. I don't, I don't like monopolies. I like to break them up. So, um, and so, what's the intent? Is well, my intent understanding right now, they're separate. 
They're but separate. they're separate. But they will hit the street approximately at the same time. And they could be on the street at the same time. At the same time. Okay. It was this conversation we had this morning in our SPLOS meetings, I'm just being consistent that this, this, I didn't just pop this up, but it was one of those where it was, I, I heard, and I, I could have misheard, but suggesting that well, maybe we should either stagger them or align them to allow the market to be able to respond accordingly. So this is a public conversation, which is like, well, why would we as a county do that to position any one contractor to have an optimal response time? And it's, 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 a, it's a public conversation. It's something like, mm. now I get it, but I'm like, I'm not trying to, I mean, I'm here to look out for the best interest of the county, right? So I, for me to, to, to sort of weigh in on that and say, yeah, let's, that means you're setting up for the other side. You're set, it's like, no, nah, I don't want to get into that. <coughs> I want to avoid that type of behavior. Uh, that's me, which is when we set up things in such a way where, you know, you're, you're staging it. And, and, and again, this is we as elected officials have to take the business staff do what they do. They just line this thing up. But for us, it's like, ooh, okay, that's a good point. But I don't care who's on the other side. If they're able to respond both of them at the same time or not, but I'm not going to intentionally do it to sort of push it one way or another. And so I, I just want to be consistent about that. So it sounds like Mark, and it was a comment, Madam Chair. Not, not, it, it, Mark, we just going to let it, however it comes out, we're going to let it go, and whoever responds is whoever responds. We're just trying to get both of them get out the same time. Other projects as fast as we can on the street. Right, but we weren't trying to give consideration to line something. I mean, it was just sort of what was brought to me in my meeting. I'm like, is that what Stan was thinking? So, no, I purchased it. No, we had, I don't know who was thinking it, but it no. wasn't purchased. That, that was me, and <coughs> my thought process was if, if somebody, you might get, they weren't bidding at the same time, possibly stagger them, then there could be an op opportunity if, uh, to bid both of them. In other words, if a contractor couldn't, didn't have the resources to bid both of them at the same time, um, <coughs> then if they weren't there, then you might get more bids for each one. That, that was my thought process. And, and I was just thinking out loud, that yeah. hasn't been told to me by anyone or discussed. That was just a thought I had when we were meeting this morning, Commissioner. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, but it's my job to check what you're saying. Because that yes, was running definitely contrary to like what now? Well, so, it's just again, that's, it's okay. It's a matter of me being here to present and, and meet with you, and didn't have all the information I needed. Yeah, it is, we, we have to be careful with that because it, it, it does. We just be careful. Um, it's, these projects are too big, um, and I, I, you have to test what, what's being told to us, and that's that's why. We have these pre-meetings before the meeting to understand, like, what's, you know, want to walk into something like, okay, what did they say? Uh, but that, Bill, thank you. Mark, you, you've answered my question that that wasn't a line of thinking, so I'm safe. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, David, uh, Mr. Good, for doing what you do with this communication piece. It's very obvious that something is happening on the ground, that you're putting the work <coughs> and the numbers are changing in terms of participation. So we really appreciate it. And also notice that the notes that we had request from H.J. Russell, uh, the, the copious notes to just outline what has been discussed, yes. they are in our book list today. So thank you all for that as well. So I'm very observant. So thank you. And thank you for what you're doing, Director. Right, thank, well, you. thank you. Appreciate and also want to just real quick say thank you to the citizens and thank you to the Board of Commissioners for allowing this process to go through. Thank you. Thank you, too. All right, we're going to move quickly to a quick legislative update. And um, you had it up on the board, uh, Director yeah, Stanley, but I know you have to. She has some good news for us this morning. Um, we say good things come to those who wait. Okay, Director Stanley, you, you're on. Yes, thank you, Chairman Jones. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, Director of External Affairs. So I'm here this morning to provide a brief uh, legislative agenda update. Um, this was a new uh, legislative session. We have a new governor and a new lieutenant governor. So we really didn't know what to expect, but there was a lot of work that still got done. Um, there were about 2,427 bills that were filed. 1,581 of those bills passed. About 1,253 resolutions, 328 were bills, but there are still 831 of those bills are still pending. And because of the way the session goes, those bills will still be alive until signing die of the 2020 legislative year. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna go 
into some of our legislative agenda accomplishments. One of the things that we had listed on the, on the legislative agenda was a uh, for Douglas County to be able to have exercise their redevelopment powers um, and create a tax allocation district. So this, um, once again, le legislation authorizes us to exercise those powers and also provide for a referendum. Um, this bill was signed into law by Governor Brian Kemp on April 30th, 2019, and <coughs> this will appear on the 2020, November 2020 ballot as a referendum. So the citizens will get to vote on whether or not the county will be able to exercise their um, redevelopment powers. <coughs> One of the other items on our legislative agenda was the replacement of our voting equipment. And this was something that all of the, um, all of the counties around the state were in favor of mostly. Um, this would provide for a new uniform voting machines for every county in Georgia as soon as possible. Um, this would consist of a ballot marking device and it would also print out a receipt. So that way there could be some sort of paper trail for voters. Um, this legislation also now provides that the Georgia voters will have five years of inactivity um, before being kicked off the Georgia voting rolls instead of three. So it does give the citizens more time if you're not active within three years, it's now five years uh, for that. And then the General Assembly allocated $150 million to replace the voting equipment, so it was not an unfunded mandate, which is positive. Um, three of our legislative priorities dealt with mental health. And there was a big push at the Capitol this year for a review of the overall Georgia's mental health system. So there was the creation of the Georgia Mental Health Reform and Innovation Commission. So this will be an overall review. Um, it will look at um, all of the facilities, all of the services available. Um, it will specifically focus on children, ad adolescents, and adults. Um, and we'll also look at how the behavioral health issues affect our criminal justice system, as well as our homeless population. Um, there will be 24 members, and it'll go to about 2023. So that's very helpful for us to kind of take a dive into what's going on with our mental health system. <coughs> Another one of our um, legislative priorities was to increase the per diem rate for local correctional institutions. Uh, we were asking, and all of the counties as well as ACCG was asking for a $5 increase, but we actually got a $2 increase. So that will now be uh, $22 per day per inmate. And hopefully you guys can appreciate that. <coughs> so one of the things that we were able to accomplish this year was working with our um, um, Department of Driver Services Commissioner um, to establish what we're going to call the uh, Douglas County Department of Driver Services Help Desk. Uh, we are in negotiations with uh, the Commissioner's Office, working with their government, government affairs um, professionals to come up with uh, exactly how we're going to put this in the tax commissioner's office. We're working on the signage now. We're designing that. So hopefully we'll have that going in the next couple of, of uh, months. Mm -hmm. um, but after our discussions, working with Senator Dugan's office, we've kind of realized that the help desk may not be what we need to kind of further what we need for all the citizens of Douglas County. We're finding that with the help desk, a lot of our seniors, they still have to get eye exams that we won't be able to do at the help desk. So we have meetings scheduled to discuss maybe some more permanent options for um, driver services in Douglas County. So nothing concrete, but we do have some meetings scheduled to see what we can do for this next year. <coughs> One of the things that we also had on our um, agenda was to uh, work on getting more sales tax from internet, internet and out-of-state retailers. And um, luckily this year, the threshold for those um, retailers was lowered from $250,000 annually to $100,000 annually. So now anyone who does over $100,000 $100, in business will now have to collect sales taxes, whether they're out of state or on the internet. So this should add about seven to $10 million in tax revenue to the state. And this will go into effect on January 1st, 2020. <clears throat> so one of the biggest bills was the small cell bill legislation. Um, there was an FCC order passed in September of 2018. That FCC order kind of encouraged local <coughs> governments to work with these small cell providers. 
Um, and so Georgia was also, the General Assembly also encouraged ACCG, GMA, Verizon, and AT&T to get together and work out some sort of deal so that um, it would be best for everyone. So that resulted in SB 66. And you'll see here, <coughs> there are a lot of um, things that are great for local governments here. Um, so there were some incentives for co-location. Instead of people putting up new poles, a new pole will cost you $1,000, but if you co-locate, it'll be $100 per site. And if you do a new pole, you have to get um, something from an engineer stating that you need that new pole. Um, there are protections in this bill for historic districts, residential areas. Um, there's also safeguards for local aesthetic and decorative pole conditions, so we do have control over that. And we are allowed to deny applications if the equipment will interfere with any road projects. So that's a big win for local government. <clears throat> this we've seen, I think, for about three years. This bill keeps coming back. This is the bill to prohibit the placement of uh, property tax, I mean, any fees on property tax bills. Um, ACCG, GMA, all the counties banded together again to keep this bill at bay. It's still out there, but it's still a big win that this bill was not able to pass uh, because we do put the street lights on our bills here in Douglas County. So, next I'm just going to go a few state hot topics that you've probably all heard about. I won't spend a lot of time on these. There was legislation to clarify uh, when you have to stop at a bus stop, bus stop, when you see the bus stop. So basically, anything that has um, a grass median, unpaved area, or a physical barrier, you don't have to stop. But anything that doesn't have those barriers, you have to stop. So there was some misclarification in the last legislative session about that. And so this was one of the first bills that the governor signed during this legislative session to clarify that. Um, I think we've all heard about the heartbeat bill um, that bans abortion once a fetal heartbeat has been detected. And then the Georgia Hope Act, this was, um, this bill was produced by one of our own um, Georgia legislative delegation members, Michael Gravely. This will provide for the production and manufacturing of low THC oil in the state. Um, it licenses six private companies and two universities to grow the marijuana for the 8,400 registered patients on the THC oil patent route. Right. So I just want to leave you with a few key cycle dates for our legislative cycle. Um, what I would like for this year is for any legislative priorities to be submitted from elected officials or appointed officials or department heads between August 15th and September 30th. So it's a six week window for everyone to submit those legislative priorities. After that, um, we will have a proposed legislative priorities list to the commissioners by October 15th. Um, and then any additions that the commissioners would like to be made, we would like to have those by October 31st if possible. Um, November 21st is the tentative date that I'm working with uh, Roger Bruce on having our Douglas County Legislative Delegation um, meeting with the uh, delegation. So that is tentative, we are working. That's the date that he would like for us to have that meeting. So we'll have to get with the city of Douglasville and the other elected officials and make sure that works. And then lastly, with the county manager's permission, we'd like to place the uh, agenda on the board of commissioners agenda for approval on December 3rd. So those are just some key dates that everybody can put out there, everybody will know. I'll send out emails as well regarding the dates so we can all know. And hopefully we'll have the agenda approved by December 3rd. That's what I have. Okay. Thank you so much. Commissioner sure satisfied. Thank you for bringing that information to us. Okay. Last but not least, we have one more. I hope they're still here. It's the 2018 audit <coughs> presentation by Malden and Jenkins, and that is <coughs> our director of It home. is just tomorrow evening. It's tomorrow. They're going to yeah. be presenting to the finance committee today, <coughs> and it's just the yeah. commission meeting tomorrow. It's on here. It's on here tomorrow. Well, with that being said, um, Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, ma'am. Personnel litigation in my end, it won't be as long as it sounds. Okay. Yeah. All right, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you all. Get you some lunch. I'm hoping you don't have some. All right, Board of Commissioners, any other discussions on uh, this work session? If there are no other questions or concerns or any contributions, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.